Hey, welcome to Power Play. Um, so, yeah, oh my God, wow, here we are at our uh, penultimate episode. Um, uh, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, super, I mean, yeah, we're all super excited. Um, so first, uh, let me introduce uh, all these um, uh, lovely and talented people. Um, uh, we have uh, as a Dr. Uh, Caden D'Alto, uh, Sam DeLev. Let's super and excited. Hello, Sam. Uh, and as uh, Benny Beckett, uh, Caitlin Bruder. And as uh, Ulez Galley, we have uh, Bizelda. And playing Beyond Vigor, Omar Najam. Hi. <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. Uh, yeah, so penultimate episode. Oh my god, uh, I, I, I'm freaked out by how fast this season went. And uh, y'all in the audience have been great to us this season. We are super grateful. Uh, so basically, um, let, let me let me run through the announcements and let's do this thing. Um, so first, uh, big thanks to Jake and everyone at Q Times. As always, Jake does a billion quadrillion things uh, behind the scenes, and uh, we are we are super grateful for it. Thank you, Jake. Um, and your subs and your bits help support Q Times and your donations to the chip jar you, there you see on the bottom uh, help support the people on uh, the show. Uh, that is our kind of feed the cast fund. Uh, and to that end, as always, we have some rewards and here's how the rewards work tonight. So um, at $50, we get a point of community determination uh, as usual. And I think the team has none right now. Uh, so uh, as usual, determination going at a premium. If we get to $50, they get the community determination. Uh, and if we should get to uh, $150 tonight, um, uh, and uh, um, as usual, the mysterious benefactor. Uh, we know that um, in-game, our team has a mysterious benefactor who sends them gifts. Uh, outside of the game, we know that that uh, benefactor is you in the chat. And tonight, uh, the team has a chance to get a 1989 Bard Traveler minivan. Uh, yeah, That's from the year I was born. <laughs> That's right. It's a Sam Delev minivan. Um, uh, yeah, um, a, it is not the nicest van, but it it's something. And uh, so far, your mysterious benefactor has gotten you a suit of leather armor, three smoke bombs, a gas-powered grappling hook gun, a metal baton, a rebreather, night vision goggles, a tracer, and a set of four earpiece communicators. Uh, some have been useful. Not a, They all haven't yet, but you get to keep them forever. So, you know, if any time in future games or future seasons or things, uh, you wind up uh, needing them. They are there. And this van is like that, If uh, but it's it's as usually one week thing only. If you don't get the van tonight, we move on, and it's something else next week. So $150, barred minivan. Um, and if we get to $250, the after credits lure drop, uh, which, uh, you know, is always fun. Uh, so uh, you have unlocked every single lure drop this season. We are incredibly grateful, honestly, for everything that you do. And... Uh, um, you can always see tears in chat by hitting command unlocks. And uh, if you can't help us out like that, you can always help us out by like liking and commenting, you know, sharing our links and stuff. Uh, and as always, I just want to say the fan art that we have gotten is just blowing us away. And the live tweets, you know, I love to read that stuff. Uh, and, you know, you what you have done for us just kind of, you know, inspires and powers us. And, and thank you. Um, and like we've done in the last couple of weeks uh, to show our gratitude. We have reached out to our friends at Dark Horse uh, and they have given us some prizes uh, to give away tonight. And hang on a sec. Woo, sorry. <clears throat> Joking a little. Okay, so what we have got tonight. Um, oh, first the rules, right. So there's no cost to enter the giveaway, but you must be present in chat to win. Uh, if you are not here when they draw your name, uh, we move on to the next person. Um, so uh, the way this works is um, the, the second prize, which ironically is the first prize we give away, uh, is as usual a digital bundle that includes Hellboy, The Complete Short Stories, Volume 1 and 2. Um, I have read Volume 1. It is great. Uh, and uh, I am a big fan of Hellboy. Uh, if, if you are in the Hellboy, you will love these, uh, even if you were just in the movies. Um, and uh, uh, that chat you can uh, that you can enter right now in chat by hitting Command Hellboy, and uh, I will announce the winner for that one after the break. So Command Hellboy to enter uh, Hellboy Complete Short Stories Volume Two, and then after the break we'll do the second giveaway, which is the grand prize, 
uh, which is a trade paperback of BPRD Plague of Frogs. Uh, and BPRD, uh, of course, is a spinoff of Hellboy. That's where Hellboy works with, uh, you know, Abe and Kate and Liz and Roger and all, all those people. And uh, uh, I, I have not read this particular BPRD, but I have read BPRD before, and it, it's kind of awesome. And, and in some ways, you know, has some things in common with the show. Um, uh, Hellboy definitely a little bit of an influence on me. But um, yeah, so these are both, you know, great ones. And uh, yeah, Hellboy is the first one. So command Hellboy to get in right now. And uh, thank you so much to Carol O'Neill and everybody at Dark Horse for providing the prizes again. Um, and uh, yeah, the game we play here is called Icons. It is published by Ad Infinitum Adventures, and it was created by Steve Kenson. Uh, you can check him out on Twitter at S. Kenson. And uh, the book edition is published by Green Ronin, although I believe they are still sold out. Um, we are asserting it is because of this show. Nobody can prove us wrong, uh, and we're just going to leave it at that. And uh, finally, um, oh, no, not quite finally. Uh, um, uh, so... Follow us on PowerPlay RPG and on Instagram, uh, and we have a room at the Q Times Discord if you want to ask me questions about continuity or the rules. I, I try and check it out from time, uh, time to time. Uh, but uh, last thing, uh, tomorrow, I, I believe, is the last day to register to vote in Georgia. Um, the stakes are super duper high. Uh, if there was like a single person out there in Georgia who, who can hear me who is not registered, it's like, please. Go out there and do the right thing. Uh, we, we we need you as now as much as we did in the presidential election. So, uh, yeah, there there. You are needed to destroy evildoers. Thank you. What they said, and that is the announcement. Time for power play. I still love that song. Um, uh, I, I, I do actually walk around my house kind of going. Bah, 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 bah. Um, anyway, so welcome back. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, previously on Power Play. After a strange object in the back of the truck he was driving was stuck was struck with bullets, a low-level organized crime henchman named Curtis Haber was consumed by a strange energy and he gained the ability to mimic or absorb superpowers in some way. In a meeting with cluster operatives Harmon and Billy Keeler, our team learned that this strange object resembled a large silver refrigerator and uh, was possibly, they decided, the space vehicle that bought, brought Ulez Galley to Earth. Uh, in the first place. After seeing his brother apparently killed by Curtis Haber, Harmon Keeler struck a tentative alliance with our heroes and told them the mysterious object was now at a secret uh, mad science lab that belonged to the cluster and was run by a person uh, that he only knew as Eklund. However, before they could follow up on that lead, Vion was hired by a man named Alton Reeves to find his mother, Audrey Reeves, who had disappeared. Uh, after some investigation, the team learned that Audrey Reeves was a 1980s co era costume vigilante uh, known as The One, uh, who had come out of retirement to help an innocent woman named Brooke Barrett escape from death row. The team helped Audrey on her mission and successfully es helped Brooke escape uh, execution. And uh, that is where we pick up. And... Uh, So all that finished up in the very early hours of uh, Sunday the 18th. And uh, I'm going to say after that, you all took the, Mer the Mer Island Ferry back to Avalon and the subway back to Baronsdale. Uh, and, you know, you went home to go to sleep for a few hours, uh, except, of course, you, Cadrex. Um, you went to Serrano Memorial Hospital uh, to work uh, because, you know, you were all work. And uh, you worked your shift uh, till about, uh, I don't know, 10 a.m. or so. And uh, then at, at, at 10 a.m., uh, as, as previously uh, agreed upon, um, in the exact same conference room the two of you first met in exactly one week ago, you meet up with Benny.
Good to see you. You too. Do you have a good shift? It went well. The ischemia wasn't as extensive as I'd worried. And how was your sleep? Um, well, uh, could have been better. Yeah, um, a little nervous about this uh, today, so I didn't sleep probably as much as I normally do, but sleep. What are you nervous will happen? I don't know. Man, I've never, you know, paid attention to it really before I've spent a um, significant portion of my life pretending that it didn't exist, and now we're poking it on purpose, so I don't really know what's going to happen. Uh, poking it on purpose. Actually, a, a core biopsy is going to be part of it, yes. Oh, boy. There's minimal risk associated with any of this, and testing won't reveal anything that isn't already the case. That's fair. So, shall we? Let's do it. Excellent. Uh, I'm, go uh, yeah, I'm going. I'm going to commandeer a section of the histology lab, and uh, we're going to send some things off for blood draw because uh, we're doing a, a WG. We're doing a whole genome sequence uh, on this per Benny's request, uh, but primarily Cadrex is, is focusing on histology, on, on micro anatomy. Uh, so the room you go in looks something, a combination of an actual lab, a pathology lab, uh, and the phlebotomy room where you get blood drawn. Uh, that's overall sort of the vibe. Uh, so part of that, yes, is, is that bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have any fears of needles, things like that? No, it's just kind of, I don't always know what's going to come out, but that's a strange thing to think about. So, um, and she's just going to roll up her sleeves and just hold out both of her arms to which one? Do you have a preference? I can't remember whether or not you're sinister. She'll just hold up her non-dominant arm. <laughs> Which is that? Uh, we'll say left. Oh, all right. Not sinister then. Excellent. <laughs> uh, so, yep. Uh, say probably two or three vials for blood draw for the... Uh, to send off for a couple labs, probably mostly a, a fairly standard palette. Those are <sighs> academic more than anything. Uh, trick swab. See? So far, so good. Mm -hmm. uh, not afraid of needles, you said? No. So unfortunately, at this point comes out the, the holy hell needles of <laughs> Biopsy needles are, are big, and <laughs> core biopsy needles are big. <laughs> um, so, I think her eyes are definitely at, widen at that, like, oh, okay. It is going to hurt a bit. Mm -hmm. And then it will. The Ask purpose the of this, uh, as I'm sort of getting around, getting things set up, is to find out on a structural level, what happens when your fire starts? Because if fire is to directly impact tissues, the DNA breaks down, the proteins break down, everything denatures when exposed to that level of heat. Yours clearly doesn't, indicating there's something protective there. So we can find out chemically what that is, and structurally where it comes from, as well as whatever structurally in your body is producing the chemical that presumably combusts in an aerobic environment, like 
Uh, that's, in some ways, not so different than this body. Uh, human, and with the capacity to do just a little more due to organs in our bodies. Huh. <sighs> good to know. So, have you seen any good movies lately? <laughs> um, the one, the, the, that new action movie that came out a couple Pinch. weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, Caden, mm -hmm. make a roll for your medical skill. <laughs> that I'm gonna, I'm gonna write down the result. You will not get the results of these tests right now, but we're gonna say that this roll accounts for the success level of all the tests being done. Yeah, and this one's to get the sample that uh, we then stain uh, with a few uh, histochemical stains and look at under a microscope to see how. Uh, Cadrax's hypothesis uh, fits the evidence and possibly the diagrams. I love it when you talk, scientist. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually do have a point of determination. Uh, and I would love to use this on all work, no play. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, sure. Um, all work, no play, yeah, that that obviously applies so just let me know what you get because i got before my... or after i ask about the movies <laughs> <laughs> all right cool uh -huh, so that's let's see uh does my surgery go into this for the biopsy for like the procedure of it uh yeah Let, let's just make one roll for essentially like you know how, the whole how, how telling the results will wind up being kit and or caboodle got it yeah all right, uh, so that's nine plus die. That's uh, 12. <laughs> 12? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, huh. Uh, two plus one plus six plus three. All right, I'm right two, down. Three, and while you know, that, oh, sorry, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cadrax is continuing to talk uh, to Benny because they mistakenly or not think that the more they explain the science, the more they put Benny at ease. <laughs> uh, the most interesting thing about this is that whatever is producing these chemicals has to be in some way related to voluntary or semi-voluntary musculature now, doesn't it? You do it at will. Well. Try to. Bit. Yeah. There are some things over which we have partial uh, physiological control and not total, uh, but surely you've heard of people's circumstances speeding up or with training slowing their own heart rate, yes? Yeah, yeah, I've heard that before. Even things that are seemingly involuntary can, with time and training, be controlled. That makes no sense. <laughs> Was it? No more needles. Oh, good. Oh. And and while you're having that conversation, uh, I'm going to say, uh, you know, in in the corner of that room, they've got one of those TVs, and it's got PR three on. Uh, and uh, uh, the the news is sort of just quietly droning in the corner, uh, but catches your attention. Uh, um, as uh, there's a different anchor now. Um, we'll say uh, if we're casting him, he would be Omar Epps. Um, and uh, he, he chimes in and he says, uh, this is Malik Douglas for PR3. Stella Combs has the day off. Uh, police are on high alert uh, this morning after convicted murderer Brooke Barrett escaped the death row wing of Lockley Island State Penitentiary late last night. Early reports claim the use of an explosive device that blasted a hole through several walls and severely damaged the structure of the prison. However, authorities say that their investigation is only getting started. Now, by coincidence, uh, you, are, you are also watching the same report uh, across town. Um, uh, we'll say beyond, let's say you are, you are watching that same report across town and we'll, we'll credit you with that knowledge. But um, actually first, 
while, while you are watching that, uh, the news and uh, generally just doing your morning thing, Ulez, you are hanging out down in the garden uh, with Sandy Carpa, who is still recovering also from uh, his experience uh, with the Keeler brothers. And uh, uh, what do you think you're doing in the garden? Um, enthusiastically telling Sandy about the penny tree that I encountered because of all the trees that I've thus seen, this one has just been the most fascinating. And uh, he's like, uh, huh, penny tree, that's cool. We, we don't, I don't think we have one of those here, uh, but uh, could we get one? Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't know. Uh, are they, are they rare? Are they expensive? I mean, I, I can look into it, I, I can certainly put somebody uh, onto it. Um, uh, but um, hey, let me ask you something. I noticed uh, there on your back, uh, there's some kind of scar, or what is that? I have been damaged. I My casing has been cracked, although I don't suffer the same as you. And Ulez will look pointedly at, like, what kind of injuries does Sandy have that are very visible? Um, let's say he's got some bruises, uh, from when he was, uh, being held by the Keelers. Uh, he also got thrown to the sidewalk, you know, and that was just a couple of days ago, uh, I remember. So we'll, we'll, we'll say that, uh, he's, you know, he's, he's maybe got a cane for like, uh, when, when he, when he took that hit to his side, I think he took a hit to his side, if I recall correctly. Um, and, uh, we'll, we'll just say generally, yeah, he, he just looks a little banged up. Your shell casing is so very fragile. I do worry about your integrity. Uh, you know, ugh. that comes with being human or actually wait, you, do you know? I mean, I don't need, do, what do you, can you die? Do you get hurt? We serve our purpose until we do not. Huh. Sounds like uh, what my old boss used to tell me uh, when I. Uh, uh, never mind, I go into that. Um, I don't want to make this about me, you know. But uh, yeah, no, uh, you know, I, part of the human condition, uh, we get hurt, we recover. You no, know, sometimes we're stronger for it, sometimes we're not. Uh, it's a little bit of a gamble. Uh, but you know, everything is uh, just, uh, I don't know. You roll with it as best you can. And, uh, you, you hope that, uh, some gangster doesn't walk up to you on the sidewalk and, you know, throw you to the ground and stomp on you. But, uh, sometimes things just happen. Your yellow bruising reminds me of a plant that has been watered too much. Will you suffer the same consequences if you are overwatered? Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Plants a living thing. I'm a living thing. Uh, there are always consequences, I guess. Uh, well, you know how it is, I guess. Uh, I, I do not. And, and Ula is, um, while you are, are talking with him, your system starts talking to you. Um, oh, no. And, in the way it talks to you. See, mm -hmm. yesterday uh, when when Cadrax uh, repaired that crack in your plastic, uh, that that unauthorized repair began a system scan. You know, it's a little like a, just like a routine viral scan that your system just turns on to make sure everything is cool. And uh, at, right now, at this moment, while you're sitting with Sandy in the garden, it it comes back to you uh, with a system message that says, uh, suggested modification to reconfiguration matrix. And a bunch of schematics flash through your mind. And, and to keep it simple, what I'll say is, um, the system is asking you to restore power to a circuit that was bypassed by those mysterious modifications that you had discovered inside of your shell, uh, I think last week or mm -hmm. the week before. And um, that is what you have. Uh, Sandy? Yeah. 
I will remain very stationary. Could you please observe my... me? Could I observe your you? Correct. Uh, how do you mean? This place exudes peacefulness, but I do worry about being exposed. I require assistance, simply your observation, to ensure that all of my systems are fully operational when I return. Huh. Uh, maybe this is something that we should get V on for. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about systems and stuff. Uh, hang on, hang on. And, and, and he kind of, you know, uh, the, we, he, he puts his hand out to you. Yes. Oh, never mind. Just follow me. And uh, he uh, he leads you through the house and up the stairs. Um, and uh, we'll just say at this point that Sandy just kind of lets himself in. And uh, <laughs> he always does. Yeah. yeah, as he off to do. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, Vion, you are sitting on the couch when Sandy comes up with Ulez. Hey, how's it going, you two? I have a warning message. Uh, from whom? My systems. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Uh, do you need, and I like get up uh, and turn off the TV. Do you need like um, some space to address that? Or do you want like the bedroom or? Uh, I require your observation. Simply ensure that my systems become fully operational. If things do not return. And Ules is going to start like running through their like electrical nodes in their hair. And they're going to pull out one that's more pink than the rest. Please detach this node and it should enable a reset. I'm not truly certain if that is still working though. Okay, well, let's hope everything goes well then. Thank you. Sandy, we wish that you stay as well. Uh... Oh yeah, I would have missed this for the world. And like, uh, he kind of like grabs for, like a bag of chips and like pulls it open and just kind of starts sitting there watching. Um, uh, so, Ulez, your your system directs you uh, essentially to remove part of your shell, and you know, uh, I'm, 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 we don't have schematics or pictures here, so I'm essentially going to say, um, uh, why don't why don't we say that the part of the shell that you need to remove is on your back? Okay. And because you do not have the kind of equipment that you would normally have, um, we'll need to either figure out a way to get around to your back or to get help from, you know, uh, I don't know, a friend, if there's anybody like that around. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think there's maybe like 20 seconds of absolute silence that passes and you only hear the crunching of like Sandy eating the chips, like the TV's off, like the windows are closed. There's, the building is not too noisy. It's just like crunch. And Ulez's lights blink back on after a moment and they turn to face Vion. It seems that I must remove the casing in my back and I do not possess the tools to reach my back. Oh, okay. Well, I got you. Don't worry about that. Uh, I walk up to the casing on the back. Is there anything? Uh, it's like a latch or anything I should look out for, or um, if you take and I'm gonna, or they will kind of provide like another one of the nodes from their hair. If you can put that, there is a hmm. It looks like what you would identify as a screw. Oh, okay. And then just kind of like twist it and pull it out. Correct. Great. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, so I go ahead and do that. Okay, okay, it's loose. Should I just pull it off? Please remove the paneling. Correct. Okay, great. I remove the paneling. And when you remove that panel, uh, there is um, a cup. Oh, by the way, uh, it looks like we have unlocked the point of community determination. So Yay, thank you. We're going to need it. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, everybody. And uh, the next tier is if they get to the mysterious benefactor, they get the 1989 Bard Traveler minivan. Um, which we want to make it individual. Can we make this just a really, really gay van? Thank you. Please. 
Yes. I mean, you know, you could paint a mural on the side or something like that. Right. Possibilities are endless is all I'm saying. And yeah. we don't get that canvas unless we get the van. <laughs> Um, so yeah, thank you so much, everybody. And uh, don't forget, if you're just showing up, uh, command Hellboy to get into our Hellboy drawing for the complete short stories of Hellboy, uh, volume one and two, uh, digital pack. Um, and uh, again, thank you. Um, so to keep this moving, well, why don't mm -hmm. we say, um, Omar, uh, that you can see essentially like you know, it's like the back of a stereo. There are some you know, uh, like wires and circuits and things, and you can kind of plug and you know, play if you wanted. Um, and uh, Ulez, we're going to say your system directs you uh, on what the repair is, and you mm -hmm. convey that to Omar. Uh, sorry, to Vion. Uh, Vion, I want you to make a roll for your coordination. To okay. Determine, uh, how well you execute this repair. Um, do you have anything else that would apply? None of my quality. I mean, investigation. I mean, that's not a <sighs> investigation. You know, he's learning. Maybe, maybe a sleight of hand, actually. Sure. Yeah, I would. I mean, this isn't a quality on my sheet, but like, I would like to point out, I do have a turntable. <laughs> 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 and like a real, not just like an out of the box, like ready to go. Like this one had to be like carefully, like measured, balanced, and making sure that tone arm is has a good float on it, Rick. <laughs> All right, I will take that into account. Okay. Uh, you can you can use your sleight of hand bonus because I feel like this is this is manual, you know, dexterity with the hands. It's, they're very similar. If you're good at sleight of hand, it, it'll give you a little edge here. So okay, uh, I got an eight. You got an eight. Okay. All right. So here's what happens, uh, Ulez. Um, as you are standing there, you feel the power in your hand blasters uh, just kind of turns off. Have you deactivated part of me? Uh, no, I, I mean, I just took off the, the casing. I'm just following your instructions. Have you followed it exactly as I stated? I believe so. Why? What's up? I would like to try and... Um, Maybe there's like a succulent. It's not doing so hot, uh, mostly because I overwatered it. Yeah, <laughs> I, actually, I remember you saying that you were overwatering the succulent. I just uh, have so much love for them. Yeah, no, I mean, and they just love water. So yeah, um, <laughs> you want to try out your blaster and see what happens? I do. Okay, um, I'm just gonna tell you right now, and you don't even have to roll. Nothing happens. It just doesn't work. I am going to express my concern. If I don't possess these powers, my prime directive cannot be completed. Um, what I'll say is because it's an internal function of your system is uh, your system now registers that suggested repair as having been completed. Hmm. And I think there's like a, oh, what's the word? You know, when like lights ripple down and up, almost like like Christmas lights when they've got like they like they go out in like order. Um, I think like uh, my whole body does that with a bunch of rainbow colors for a while as everything is restarting like bit by bit. It starts at my toes and it goes all the way up to the top of my head and then down all the way to the end of my hair. Um and then like the regular low light of Ulez's body just kind of comes back. I cannot sense any differences. Uh, I, I believe you have truly completed what I asked. May you please put the panel back on? I feel exposed. Yeah, absolutely, of course. Uh, and I do that as quickly as possible. And, and while you're doing that, there's a knock at the door and Sandy uh, lets in. Um, Thanks, Sandy. Uh, can we say uh, Caden and Benny? Oh, great. Thanks, Sandy. <laughs> uh, yeah, no problem. Um, by the way, you're out of chips. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's correct, Sandy. <laughs> and uh, he nods at the two of you. Hey, Doc. Hey, Benny. Uh, 
and Good uh, to see you. And, and then he walks past you and kind of you know makes his way down the stairs, uh, leaving the four of you. I understand. Hey, how's it going, you two? Status of the rest. Pardon? I understand from uh, Willis that the chips are down. What is going on other than that? Uh, well, aside from that, Ulez, uh, well, I'll let you take it away. I, I just did some assistance. Oh, I required some internal repairs. The external ones that you had performed were optimal. However, I required some wires to be diverted. We don't know why. Um, but I am doing my best. If you need further assistance in such investigations, of course, I am always at your disposal. I'm going to look uh, back at that a second. A human metaphor that does not involve elimination, particularly into dumpsters, a reprehensible and rude thing to do to any sapient. Uh, no, instead it means that I am available to you uh, to put my talents to your use in such an investigation, should you wish it. I thank you. I never realized dumpsters were bad until mostly a few days ago. There's often a value judgment associated with refuse in human cultures, yes. Possibly a survival. Uh, rotten food, having a poisoning quality and so on. I don't know. Uh, humans, could you speak to it? About, about the trash? I guess it's like a, you know, connotation of negative because that's where you put things you have no use for anymore. Or are broken or something. And that's I find why that hurtful. Yeah, so that's why it was very rude that they put you there. I have plenty of use and I'm fully operational. Watch. And Ulez, um, I want to try and do something to that heck and succulent. Give yeah, it some light, help it grow, dry it out, make it healthier. No, nah, whatever's <laughs> going on in your systems, it's still going on. And uh, whatever this repair was supposed to do so far, your blasters just still do not seem to do anything. And, you know, you're kind of standing there and everybody's watching you, you know, nothing happens. I require more time. That's okay. That happens to me sometimes, too. I thank you for your understanding. Glare at that succulent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so well, how's everybody else doing? Just a quick check in, I guess. I don't think there's been too much bruising around the biopsy site. Yeah, I think it's good. I think, yeah, good good doctor. We've got a good doctor. I got poked with several needles today. We're we're doing physiological investigations. Oh, nice. Good, good. Yeah. The stains are running right now. And the genome sequence naturally will take a very long time. Uh, I don't know if either of you caught it, but I was watching the news today. Oh, yes. There was a apparently an explosive device while we were at the prison. I didn't notice anything to that effect, did you? <laughs> Doc, I think that was us. <laughs> Benny, did you set off an explosive device? I tried really hard not to. Uh, no, it wasn't me, sorry, no. I'm sure Miss Reeves must have done them. Nonetheless, our more central mission surrounding, well, Ulez's vehicle, which is not in their possession, itself a miscarriage of justice. Correct. Have we looked into retrieving it? No. Would this group be amenable to making that an order of business? If that's what Ulez wants. I would love to be able to find my craft. It might be able to provide me with some more information about where I came from and why my prime directive cannot be completed. 
Vion, I don't want to interrupt your uh, private eye ing. Mm -hmm. But this would be wonderful if we could take a day and perhaps investigate as you would, but something for me. You know, I'm so glad that you brought that up, Les, because and I'd like to lead everyone into the bedroom where I have set up a giant cork board with yarn and a bunch of the names and articles like typed at, you know, like cut out of the newspaper. Sure. Because I am a private investigator and this is kind of my uh, little foray. So I kind of set this up with all the folks we've interacted with and all the different leads we got going. And of course, there's that one hanging chat, I guess we have with that scientist that we need to visit. So this is kind of what we're looking at right now. And I say we just go right into it. Let's go get your vehicle and find out what's going on, Ulez. That's my number one priority. Thank you. This is very confusing. <laughs> oh, the the cork board? It's okay. Well, just so you know, it's like connections of different. It's like I use like a piece of evidence to connect folks to each other. Sometimes I write down something that we learned where it's like, you know, worked for this person. Um, I, I did get a little overboard. It's kind of exciting because, you know, it's somewhat straightforward really at this point. So, yeah, no. Um, and uh, let's see. I guess I won't. Okay, you know, I'm just going to give that board to you. So here. here <laughs> I was going to make you spend a point of determination, but you don't have a point of determination. So I'm going to be kind. So instead, uh, we'll use the mental image of yeah. Vion carrying this dang board from the staples or whatever over multiple blocks. Just just have that with you. Yes, because I am a PA and that has happened before. So <laughs> actually, you know what, Vion, make a, an investigatory role with all okay. the applicable bonuses to see how much is on this board. All right. Here we go. <laughs> I'm maxed out. That's 12. Oh, okay. Um, that is, yeah, I'll call that a massive success. Um, uh, so the board takes you through basically everything that you know. Uh, exactly a week ago, uh, Curtis Haber was, uh, ordered by Mickey Bomberg to drive a truck that had some sort of weird silver refrigerator thing in the background, uh, in, the, in the back of the truck. Um, that truck was attacked by the cluster at some point on its route, uh, and uh, Curtis Haber uh, drove it into Carpa Storage where he was followed and attacked. It gave off you know, some kind of energy that gave him his superpowers. Uh, when he went to the hospital uh, because he had been wounded, uh, he is where he ran into Caden. Uh, where he stole Caden, uh, you know, sonic powers, and uh, eventually, you know, this part you all know. Um, you know, Curtis Haber worked for Mickey Bomberg. You know, Mickey Bomberg is enemies with the Cluster. You know, Harmon and Billy Keeler work for the Cluster, and Harmon Keeler uh, and you sort of struck an accord with each other uh, when you said goodbye to each other outside of uh, the Key Lime Factory. Um, you know. What else do you know? Uh, Hugo Hill. Hugo Hill, thank you. Uh, yeah, you know, Hugo Hill uh, had a notation in one of uh, his ledgers uh, that indicated he was uh, paying some kind of uh, protection money or something uh, to the cluster, uh, something to that effect. Um, and uh, you know, just in general, um, you asked Mickey Bomberg if he wanted to team up with you to try and get the truck back. You know, he told you to go to hell. Uh, you know, Ann Witt uh, is generally an expert on crime matters, uh, you know, general crime matters in Port Ruby. Uh, you have run into a police detective named Leon Neal a couple of times earlier in the week, uh, who may or may not know something about the criminal underworld. Uh, trying to think what else might you know. And uh, you know of the existence of the Whisper Network, uh, which you learned about, uh, an online network where people kind of put up weird stuff that they see or think they see or claim they see in Port Ruby. And sometimes it has information, useful information. And sometimes it just has a lot of bunk on it. So it's like, uh, that that's basically what you've got, I think. Okay. So this is where we stand. Uh, very impressive. Thank you. 
I appreciate that. That's very nice of you, Liz. I don't know where to begin. So if our goal is to find Ulez's ship. We know the the cluster took the truck, right? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to say, you also obviously know that the name of the mad scientist or, or guy who runs the mad science lab uh, is Eklund. Uh, is that? Uh, yeah, Dr. Eklund. May or may not be a pseudonym, of course. Yeah. Is Eklund associated with cluster? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so. Cluster or Basically, it's like it's the Cluster's Mad Science Lab, yep. and according to Harmon Keeler, Eklund is the guy in charge. That seems like the best approach. Mm -hmm. The notion that there is a science lab that investigates such things, we could infer the kind of analytic equipment that they use and talk to manufacturers for a recent shipments list or shipments list overall. There's probably only so many places that have widely disparate uh, scanners, reagents, and so on to find the intersection between all of them would po quite possibly lead us to candidate locations for the lab. That sounds like a good plan. So how do you want to go about doing that? <laughs> uh, Ulas, might you assist me, since you seem to have some technological capacity, in assembling a candidate list of analytic equipment that we might then search for manufacturers? I would love to. I'm currently not feeling very useful, so this application of my knowledge would be quite nice. Ulez, um, we're going to say that you jump online and start doing your... Uh, well, let's see. What is your... Okay, we call this... You have experts in robotics, electronics, and mechanics. Electronics seems... Direct, most directly what Cadrax is asking yeah. about. I figure uh, there are only so many places that order like an fMRI and an electron microscope and like, you know, a uh, uh, fluorescer, like anything that analyzes weird science, like that's going to be a bunch of domains, which is weird and non-specialized and maybe wherever that stuff gets shipped to. So like Rick, because like for my own purposes, like I'm very, uh, I'm really good with the hardware rather than the software to be able to make that connection. I mean, it wouldn't be above Ulez to be able to take whatever bits and pieces. So sorry, Vian, maybe if you have an extra laptop, take it apart, put something together that can properly track a very specific um, words uh, that Cadrax has offered up, like just track it within a certain radius. Um, because, like, I don't possess, like, software knowledge. I can't, like, hack the internet. Um, I, you know, I don't know if you can use hardware knowledge to hack the internet, but what I can say is I, I will let you apply your bonus in a sense that it's, like, because you have a good understanding of hardware, you might be able to sort through a wide variety of results better. The catch is, is you don't have any special expertise in searching the internet or, or, or that kind of stuff. So... Uh, I'm going to set an appropriate level of difficulty, and why don't you make an intellect roll, and you can apply that bonus in, okay. in, you know, in that sense. Can uh, I assist as an investigator? I, yeah, we, maybe, because like, Benny's really good at internet. Yeah, as just a young person who is a human in a big city. Like, <laughs> like Google Who is particularly yeah. strong. Like, could, could we do a combination task between the four of us? Because I think uh, all of us could bring something to this that would be beneficial. Kind of fun. And I mean, also fun. Here. Combined tasks, right, usually, right, you know, imply that you are all doing the same thing. I, I guess you are, it's not exactly how they are supposed to work, but let's let's give this a shot. Um, I also individually roll to try to uh, establish, uh, like, basically do a bunch of maneuvers to set Ulez up. That's true, thing. Yeah. Is it Icon's idiomatic? 
thing. Like if we do like a quick, like, here's how, here's how I know best how to search student it. And Vian's going to give like a, and this is how you filter shit to X, Y, Z, how I search things. And then like, I mean, like we could have basically like giving bonuses to your oh, yeah. role or something. Like, I don't know if that's how any of that works. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Right, like establish the quality of Boolean logic. <laughs> I'm basically going to try and use the rules of the combined test here. So essentially, it's like you, uh, you're all going to tell me what you're doing. Um, I'm, I'm going to set a single difficulty essentially for the task. You're going to roll your end of what you're doing against, and you're going to let me know what it is. And if you succeed on your task, I'm going to give uh, Vion or Ulez, who's doing the search, who's the who's the Ulez. Main? Ulez. I'll give Ulez a one point bonus for each person who succeeds. Very cool. Okay. okay. I think that's how the combined task works. So, oh God, you are so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> We're so good. Yes, we'll see about that. I know. <laughs> Takes two sides to do in a post roll. Okay. Benny, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, I'm trying to see if I have... Like, I don't know if my filmmaking would come into this because we said it was like because she was her whole thing was like the one man crew. She had to know how to do all of that for herself before. I'm trying to figure out. I don't know if I, I have anything that's going to actually help yeah, aside from the fact that she's just a young person. <laughs> I don't think so. I think you're just yeah. making a straight up intellect role. Okay. Let's do. I can't burn determination for an assist, can I? I mean, you could do it if you want. I, you know. <laughs> It's uh, a I'll just, game, but, we'll just roll. We'll just yeah. see. Yeah. See what happens. Okay. Uh, uh, way, intellect. Folks, uh, yeah, intellect. While they're doing this, if you still want to get into the raffle, you can do Command Hellboy in chat. Um, I think uh, we are uh, uh, getting fairly close uh, to uh, the 1989 uh, Bard Traveler minivan. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for that. Also, volumes one and two are really good. They're really good. If you haven't read them, they're like very a great wintertime read. Yes. I mean, listen to Omar. He, he knows what he's talking They're very like they're very good. I don't mean just normally like, oh, these are pretty good. No, they're very good. Okay, so what how do you do, Benny? My lovely coffee dice rolled me max, so nine. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh how did you do uh Oh my gosh. I got a seven. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Yeah, Are you doing seven. anything, Cadrax? Or do you have anything to offer in this? Or is he just the others? Uh, Cadrax is the one who most like uses scientific equipment in their daily life more mm -hmm. than anybody else. Yes. And so would be lending their contextual knowledge. Yeah. Uh, like they do the science. They did the science today. Um, that is a common reagent. That is an unexpected reagent. Yeah. Like this, right. these are the only places to get that because the hospital orders these kind of thing. Make an intellect roll and uh, let me know how you get, uh, what you get. You can use, no, nah, probably just your intellect. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, that's a nine from me, bro. Nice. All right, Ulez, you, you will get a plus three. Okay. Which is good because I needed it. I rolled a one on the dice. Uh, that's my intellect is four, five, and then plus two, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got a ten total. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, Thank you for your help. <laughs> Double digits. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to say is that like that narrows it down to roughly about 50 places uh, oh. in the city the size of Port Ruby. Um, there are, you know, all kinds of universities and hospitals and research facilities and, you know, all, all you know, I mean, that, that, that use this kind of equipment and more than you would think have more than one piece of it. Um, yeah. But you now have a point of reference. If you can. Let's you know. cross reference that with Dr. Eklund. Oh, right. Any yeah, associations if, if, with that name? If staff and directory can or eliminate um, anything that's straightforward. If it is a college campus, this is probably not the center of the cluster. That's also likely. a good point. Well, what I'll say is, is that the vast majority of the places on that list are actually like 
you know, kind of large public, you know, institutions of some kind or another, or, or at least, you know, places uh, you'd expect these things to be and that do have like, you know, there's a bioengineering department, a mechanical engineer, they have, weird stuff. right. Yeah. You know, there are some private places, but it's like, you know, like, you know, like Verizon labs or something like that, you know, like, or Perfecto labs or something, you know, where it's like one of those these, on a list. Uh, yeah. I mean, that would be on the list, but like, just like all the, the rest of them, it's like, you know, that's, a large, you know, a large, well-traveled place that is well known and very public and, and kind of stuff. So, in that sense, I, I'll say it's a it, nothing exactly jumps out to you as like, oh, here's the weird shady one. It's like they all <laughs> kind of seems that like all of these places are very large. Yeah, none like is going to a warehouse. Yeah, right. Nothing's going to a warehouse. Okay. Uh, but you have this as a point of reference, right? If you want to try and now follow up on other clues or things like that, you might eventually be able to cross reference things that you learn against this list and narrow it down. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a note that you have it and the level of help it will give you. Okay. Leon, will you add this to your board now? Absolutely. And uh, cool. I print it on like an inkjet printer and I just pin it to the list or I pin it to the board you and then I print that. out another copy for us just to take on the road. Yeah, you're using all like the string and you're, you know, yep. like, with the right color markers and drawing the arrows. And, um, this is really good. Ulez, you did a great job in your private investigation. You should be very proud of this. Thank you. I'm happy to be an employee here. So what is your next move? Did uh, Benny's brief Google Foo yield anything on Eklund? Oh, yeah. You want to do that. Benny, mm -hmm. make a roll uh, intellect. Okay. I don't have anything. <laughs> Five. Five. Okay. Um, Benny, there, there are a surprising number of people with the last name that is spelled E K L U N D D or E K L A N D. Since you're not even exactly sure. Yeah. E C K. We got lots of letters in there that sound like other letters. Like <laughs> right, yeah. You, you you take a lot of guesses at it, and and mm -hmm. uh, you, you you come up also with a list. A lot, uh, yeah. Seems to imply like a lot of Eklund's uh, in all sorts of positions and jobs over the years, because like you don't even know how far back or where you're searching. Mm -hmm. And again, it could be a student that we don't even know. But yeah, I think she would sit and like try to find list of names and then like whittle it down to people who have some sort of either technology, science, medical, something in that vein, like any anything that like seems like that, that to at least maybe we can cut like the, the I don't know, someone who is a, like an author off of the list, probably like she'll just highlight the th ones of people who, who at least seem like they have some, might have some connection to either science or technology. Right, they may in fact have a doctorate. Yeah. Uh, Local uh, graduate institutions might themselves be a filter. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely possible it was educated non-locally, but there mm -hmm. are probably only so many doctoral theses published over the last few decades of the surname Eklund, and those are all publicly available by necessity. Benny, make an intellect roll for this redacted... Follow-up? Okay, yes. okay. <laughs> like, um... Okay, six. <laughs> okay, so you remove a fair amount of the names that you feel like are obviously can't be connected. Mm -hmm. There are so some sous chef like, and a uh, like <laughs> yeah, 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 like a music teacher and a, you know okay. like um, and uh, but you have to leave on a fair amount of names who either have jobs that look like they could be related or that you can't figure out what their jobs are. So you can't eliminate them in good conscience. Yeah. So, you know, and everyone you who's alive and I have reason to believe that they are, are at least somewhere in this. But you did minor succeed. So you do weed out a little bit. Um, okay. well, hold on. I, I guess it's like, now you have two lists. Um, Let's cross reference. Somebody want to try like right one of these, you know, like don't uh, let me lead it. Don't let me lead it. <laughs> Someone else go. <laughs> I have decent intellect, but I don't necessarily understand all of the details. This isn't my Cadrax. first 
Pardon? Huh? Pardon? Uh, and by the way, I'll always also throw out there, it's like, uh, I know nobody's used it since game one, I don't think. Uh-oh. But spend a point of determination on a quality, you can get, you know, deductions, you know, like hints from me. Like, remember how oh, he yeah. followed the hospital gown in game one. So if you're feeling super lost, you are welcome to spend a point of determination and, and, and get hints or something, you know. Hmm. Not saying that you need to do that now, but I'm just reminding you that it's out there. Do um, I have a determination? I can't remember if I deleted it or not. We have a community one, so and this is a communal thing. So, like, let's see how we do on maybe one or two more Checks. avenues of inquiry, yeah. and then use the GM help us button. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. For the record, uh, I have uh, Benny with two, Vion with none, Caden with none, and Ulez with none, and the community has one. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. I'll fix my sheet. Um, I will. I would be happy to do an investigation at the very least to show Ulez what I'm doing and like how I'm thinking through this process where I'm going to compare the names on the list and any addresses that Benny was able to propagate versus the list of places that ha got those items. Okay. Interesting. Right? Um, huh. Okay, make an intellect roll with all your applicable investigation bonuses. <laughs> Great. Ooh. Okay. Okay. It's going to oh. be a nine. Nice. Uh, huh. Uh, okay, hang on. Let me think here for a second. Let me think. <laughs> um, okay. You spent Love some that. time sorting through the names and, you know, the, the others, you're killing time. Ulez, you're trying out your hand blasters and keep trying to wait for something to happen. Uh, Kaden, you are probably sitting very attentive-like or whatever it is that you do. Um, or, or, or I don't know, you know, uh, whatever it is you do to kill time. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, finally, uh, Vion, you, you kind of start to see something emerge uh, from, from the paperwork. Mm -hmm. um, it it could be nothing. Mm -hmm. It could just be a coincidence. Okay. Um, but there are uh, three of those locations on the list mm -hmm. located in Yard Hill, mm -hmm. right in Barrowdale. Um, and there is one Eckland in Barrensdale Heights, which is, as we know, or can see from the map, if we have it up, uh, just one neighborhood over. Um, and, you know, it's not a lot, but your investigators got likes proximity, you know, it's like, hey, here, there is an Eckland, he's near a couple of these locations, it's the only place I have found something like that. It jumps out at you, and I'll say you relay this to the others. Okay. Um, now, uh, yeah. everyone, we got a lead. Is well, in terms, we we've got at least like a starting place to look into. Um, I've got a quick question. Yeah. Do we want? Uh, and this is to the team. Oh. Do do we want to test this a little bit, just to test the waters and see if this is actually like a more solid lead before we go after it? What do you suggest? Do you what methodology. Um, I walk over to my kitchen and I open one of the drawers and out of that drawer, I'd like to pull a burner. Shush. Uh, I would like to pull out a burner phone and I would like to text the number uh, from Benny's list for that specific person. And I type out the text. Um, boss says we have to move the item now. And I show it to the team. You're sending it to this guy. I haven't sent it yet. Oh, um, but I put it down on the table. Now, if we send this and we get any response whatsoever, or we get a call right away, I say we pursue this lead. I haven't sent it though, because this could this could bust our element of surprise. So if we do this, we do it as a team. Now, I, I can actually give you a tad more. Oh, um, okay, <laughs> because. Uh, when you find this guy, obviously, if you've got his phone number, you look him up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I can give you what is available on this person that you can just get out of a basic Google search or, mm -hmm. or, search or whatever we call it here. 
Um, and uh, this guy's name is uh, Declan Eklund. <laughs> Um, and, uh, How, what, what spelling did it land on? <laughs> well, that's our guy. That's a comic book name. That is right here. Oh. D E T L A N E K L U N D. And, uh, Declan Eklund, um, was a, uh, he was a, uh, briefly a, uh, city councilman who had been, uh, appointed to a seat by the mayor back in, uh, 2000. Um, about 20 years ago, and uh, he ran for re-election and was uh, soundly defeated. And uh, that is basically what you find on him. And uh, he seems to have just, you know, disappeared into private business after that. And that is what you get on Declan Eklund. Uh, who was the mayor in that period? The mayor 20 years ago, uh, we'll say... Um, was uh, Mayor uh, Gail Costa, um, a, a man named Gail Costa, C-O-S-T-A. Uh, I ask because we have a brief history of crime uh, from our journalist compatriot uh, who might have spoken uh, or reported on whether that mayor had cluster sympathies, appointing a city council member could be indicative of some sort of corrupt influence, especially because uh, your leaders are notoriously corrupt. Uh, that's true. In fact, we, what, we could send over a phone call and maybe get even a little bit more intel. So do you not want to do that thing with the text message? Hmm. I mean, the thing is, this is feeling pretty straightforward. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good about this. My detective gut is saying, this is our mark. Do we want to maintain our element of surprise? Given that we don't know the tactical strength of our opponents, surprise might be among our only advantages. That's true. Yeah, I'm going to agree with the doc on that. Do not send that message, please. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. I'm going to close the phone, but the thing is, I'm going to keep this on me in case we do need to send this message as a distraction later. We can do that. Okay. Excellent. So do we, we yeah, do we, listen, uh, again, I'm just following my detective gut here. Do, should we just go straight to where this person works right now? Did we not want to talk with the reporter? We can send a message to the reporter and get more information as we're on our way. Okay. That sounds like a good idea. If we communicate too extensively with her, she might want to interview us again. Oh, yeah, that's... I don't want if, that. We maybe make a... a burner email? <laughs> That's oh, so really internet. easy. Yeah, we can definitely do that. That's a matter of Just seconds. Make, make email. Hey, I'm a student doing research on political history of Port Ruby. Can you give me some resources into XYZ? Would that is that maybe that would work? <laughs> Let's. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. As any, I say we do it. <laughs> and she doesn't. She doesn't have to look at us anymore. <laughs> Benny did not like how in incensed she was at knowing more about us, <laughs> which to be fair, we did like burst into ROPs and break a couple of things, but she still makes me nervous. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I would like to make a burner email very quickly and um, <laughs> send an email like Benny just recommended and put a little bit too much information that like a student would know, mm -hmm. but without giving any of our personal information or who we are. So it is like a thing where it's like, okay, this is clearly someone's like digging deep, but we're going to play it really safe and not put any of our cards on the table. We just want information. Wow. Uh, yeah. I am a student at the University of Port Ruby. I'm yep, doing yeah. a... Like, <laughs> the whole like... At Port Ruby? Yeah, UPR. <laughs> The yeah, tiny uh, like bio, like personal bio of like a student that they have to give for the reach out to a professional. Like, 
Okay. <laughs> oh, well, a... teachers don't give that assignment. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, make a willpower roll uh, to see um, how convincing this thing is, um, whoever it is that's sending it. Should I? Okay. Uh, well, the I... thing is, I have, uh, you know, out, outside of game, um, I have a plus one performance. Oh. What's your willpower look like? My willpower is four. Okay. So I have a plus six to willpower. <laughs> Okay, you know, I mean, why don't you why don't you go ahead and take the reins on this one, Benny? I, not to like be like flip, but I was like, as in world, like Benny was the closest, most recently a student, I think. Yes, that was going to be my thing for it, but I guess so you're in the journalism. A little bit, yeah. Yes. You performed an interview. I did perform an interview. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she hates doing that, but she's done it. <laughs> All right. Make your roll. Let's see how. Okay. Can I take? Can I have filmmaking as a bonus? <sighs> sure. <laughs> Yay. Love it. Love love it. Defeated sigh. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I live for it. Honestly, this is a diegetic email. Okay. <laughs> This also seems particularly appropriate to Cadrax because they understand burner phones and burner emails to be ones that Benny can use. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, another thing to add to it. Okay, so um, 11. Okay, you send the email out uh, and do you wait for a response or, or do you have somewhere else to go while you're waiting? You said you were going to do it on the way to... Right. We're heading to Dr. Eklund's workplace that's listed publicly. Perhaps we'll receive a reply while we are in transit. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Eklund, uh, you did not get a workplace for him. Actually, what you got was um, a home address. Uh, you know, um, uh, great. Just <laughs> kind of, yeah, just there in the, the white pages, you know, uh, just public. Um, and that home address, like I said, was in Bannersdale Heights. So uh, we'll say uh, since Morgan, we haven't quite got to the van yet, so you're going to have to uh, hoof it from Fort Trumbull <laughs> over to Bannersdale Heights. Sure. Uh, Could really and, use that van, though. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> uh, and when you get to Bannersdale Heights, uh, um, Declan Eklund's uh, place is in a uh, kind of split brownstone. Uh, it's like, you know, half, half the brownstone, and uh, it, it's got... Um, uh, there's a, an entrance right off the street, and it looks like it's maybe three stories tall. And it is, of course, you know, locked. Um, so what's the plan here? Um, are we just going to gather intel, or are we going to engage with him? I think the plan is to gather intel. I can go in and just check if anyone's home. <laughs> that seems wise. We can... Meanwhile, go through some of the refuse that's publicly available. <laughs> I would like to do that. Excellent. Perhaps you can join me. The blue bins tend to have particularly fruitful material for this kind of thing. Mm. Yes. All right. Well, have a good time. There are beta plants. I like that dedication, <laughs> uh, uh, Skadrax. Uh, all right. Um, so you're going to go, uh, Vian, you're going to go upstairs and see if he is in the apartment while the rest yes. of you are going to go kind of go through the garbage and see what you can find. Yes. What's your name, baby? All right. Kadirax, I want you to make an intel in intelligence roll for the search. Uh, Vian, you uh, walk through the front door, uh, which is easy for you. And mm -hmm. you find yourself uh, in... Uh, it is a private home. There is a living room, it's couch, television, you know, kind of unremarkable, uh, very middle class. Um, and uh, there's a staircase in front of you that goes up to the second floor. Okay. Uh, I'll, I go up the stairs. Okay. Um, you walk up the stairs and uh, when you get up there, um, you find, uh, there's a bedroom, uh, there's nobody in it, um, and, uh, there is a locked door, uh, which, uh, you are able to phase through because it is, uh, well, it, you are able to, and, um, that is, it looks like an office. Perfect. 
desk, bookcases, some filing cabinets, stuff like that. Okay. But do not come across any people. Uh, I would like to, I look around. Is there any, like, do I see any obvious like surveillance tech, any cameras, sensors? Make an intellect roll. Oh boy. And I'm going to add investigation to this. Sure. Great. Okay. Nine. You do not see anything. Um, you poke around. It's like everything, you know, his computer's very low tech. Everything's kind of dusty. It doesn't really look like maybe he works here very often. Um, but no, no. Okay. I would like to open uh, the file cabinet. Okay. You're going to start searching the file cabinets? Is that the deal? Yeah. Okay, make an, in, uh, an investigation roll for that. Um, how did you do on your investigation roll, Caden? Eleven. S sorry. Eleven. Eleven. Oh, uh, you're you're a little um, staticky, but uh, uh, okay, eleven. Okay, eleven. You go through the trash and you are able to identify the one that belongs to Declan Eklund because you can see his name on some of the bills in one of the bags. Bills, and, perfect. Yeah, it is mostly kind of unremarkable stuff. Some old bills, orange peels, you know, uh, coffee grinds, things like that. Um, and, and you find in there a slip of paper also. And uh, the slip of paper... Um, with your 11, I'll say it's like you can see that it has been sort of folded very carefully, you know, and, and you unfold it. Uh, and what it says on it is uh, the letters D as in dog, G as in green, uh, and then the word belt, B-E-L-T. And uh, then it says 2404A. And just something about the way it has been carefully folded, you know, even though it is now in the garbage, makes you feel like this was once important to him or to somebody who was in his house. Interesting. Okay. That's what you get from the garbage. Vion, you are upstairs searching the filing cabinets, and how did you do? Um, I got an eight. You got an eight. Okay. Um... Okay, um, you search through the filing cabinets, and I got to say, it, you know, you really do not find anything super remarkable in the cabinets. Um, okay. A lot of it looks like old political stuff, you know, from decades past about mayors and city councilmen, you know, long, you know, long receded into the, he the history of Port Ruby, many of whom you don't even recognize since you've only lived here a short time. Um, and... Uh, while you are doing that, Benny, you get a response from Ann Witt at the Port Ruby Standard. Okay. I'm sorry. Remind me, what exactly did you ask Ann? <laughs> okay. So we were asking about, um, specifically, we wanted to know about the the mayor who is the, the individual who is the mayor in 2000. And we had it framed in a, sorry, correct me if I'm wrong, but we had it framed as though we were looking through, like, crime and political ties through the history of Port Ruby. Okay. So uh, I probably would have asked about like a couple of like the a couple several past mayors like around 2000 like this one after the 2000 mayor and a couple from before just to little like little red herrings. Beef it the beef the email a little bit um and like maybe would have googled some facts to throw in there about what I knew but like was hoping to speak with a professional like <laughs> that's sure, kind of sure. yeah. So she writes back and, you know, she's always happy to help uh, journalism students. Um, and uh, uh, she says, you know, she can give you background that is basically widely available. Um, she obviously can't betray confidences or give out secrets that she couldn't give out publicly, but she sort of fills you in on some general background. Um, Mayor Gail Costa uh, did what, um, Gail Costa was the mayor in 2000. And uh, at that time, uh, the cluster was ascendant. Um, it was consolidating its power. It was really uh, picking up steam. And uh, she knows that there were uh, a bunch of investigations and hearings tying several members of his administration in with the cluster. Uh, 
but no real evidence was ever found. And ultimately, nobody was ever prosecuted in connection with that. She does not have any specific information on Declan Eklund, uh, but uh, she says uh, the city council was corrupt, uh, you know, back then, and she would not be shocked uh, if Declan Eklund was on the take. Um, she and she she throws in a comment uh, that you know he he you know he's luckily he was so off putting that uh, he, even with the help of city hall he couldn't get himself reelected, uh, and that is what you get from her. Cool, that's great. Um, I'm going to read that email over our fancy earpieces so that Vian has the information. <laughs> sure. Um, in case anything you find in there, you are all. With that info now, uh, are you still outside, or, or uh, what? Are, are you going in? How is this working? I think we're still we're waiting for Vian to come back. Yeah, we need the okay, and like Ula just has a handful of like eaten <laughs> orange peels. Vian, <laughs> uh, what are you up to? Uh, this, uh, this yellow one is a uh, banana. It's also made of plants. <laughs> Lovely. This was, in fact, a fruit. Uh, ah, very slimy at the moment. Yes, it it's is pretty slimy. It is significantly it's decomposed. Uh, mm -hmm. All of these parts that are brown, more of them are yellow, but never all of them at once. It begins ah. green and yellows progressively over time, but before it completely transitions from green to yellow, it immediately gains several brown splotches. There is no perfectly yellow stage in between. Fascinating. These bananas are complicated. Bananas, I think. Bananas. Yeah. Uh, from this, the term bonanza, which means to have many of them. Ah, fascinating. Banan. And he's reading an email and doesn't hear this conversation because I want that to continue to be a thing. That... <laughs> but I really understand. I've been here for so I've been here a while. I get it, y'all. You know what's uh, up. No, that was called. Um, so, yeah, uh, while that conversation is going on, what are you doing, Vion? Um, I'm going to do one quick cursory uh, check of the desk before okay, heading uh, back downstairs. Make an investigation roll again. Great. Uh, that rolled off. Uh, that is a 12. Okay. You are searching through the desk and mm -hmm. you do kind of cursory check and you don't really see a lot and you are about to, you know, head out. And uh, you, you happen to quickly glance down um, and uh, essentially lying in the garbage can, uh, you, you see uh, there's like a little kind of plastic card and you bend down and you pick up the plastic card and uh, it has on it um, a serial number and it says the words parking pass and it says Serrano Memorial Hospital. You have got to be kidding me. And I tap my earpiece. You have got to be kidding me. For what? Doc, I want you to check this out. And I walk through and I kind of just like go through the door and I'm carrying this card with me. Go down the stairs. As I'm saying, you've got to be kidding me. I go through the door. I recorporealize the second I get outside and I want to hold up the card and show it to the doc. I think I know where our suspect works. Do I know of an Eklund at my <laughs> hospital? At my ho at my hospital? You do not know of an Eklund. Eklund in my hospital? It's more likely. <laughs> more likely than that but you know what? With you holding up that parking pass and Caden looking at it kind of in disbelief, confusion, whatever you call this kind of, uh, you know, is there an Eklund in my hospital emotion? Um, I think that is a perfect place to take our break. Ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh. In oh, my wow. hospital? <laughs> yeah. um, wow. Thank you uh, so much, everybody. We are almost uh, to the van. Um, it, oh. it, when we come back uh, from break, I will announce the winner of the Hellboy drawing. I think you can still get into it with Command Hellboy, and then we will start the BPRD drawing after that. Um, and Let that's Benny use your driving skill. Yes, Ben. Yeah, <laughs> Benny, that driving skill. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to use it yet. <laughs> All right, take ten. We'll see you soon, everyone.
Welcome back. Um, so, first of all, while we were gone, it looks like y'all got the van for the team. Uh, so we will get that in as soon as we can. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, and, and it looks like we're, we're actually part of the way, uh, to the lore drop. Uh, so yeah, we are, we are super grateful for them that, uh, for that. And we legit spent half a break talking about how to make this van as tacky as possible. And <laughs> we're excited. You, you, they really did. And wow, you, you, you're, you're in for something. I gotta say. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. And uh, right now, uh, so first, let me announce the winner of the Hellboy drawing, uh, and that is uh, brrr, Mr. Owlbear. Uh, Mr. Owlbear, if you are here right now in the chat, uh, you win uh, the uh, Hellboy uh, uh, Volume uh, One and Two Complete Short Stories uh, digital uh, package. And uh, thanks to our friends at Dark Horse for that. And now we uh, start the drawing on the grand prize, uh, which is a copy of BPRD Plague of Frogs, which is BPRD is a spin-off of Hellboy. So if you want to get in on that, uh, I think the command is command BPRD. And uh, uh, just uh, that is a hard copy, not a digital copy. So congratulations, Mr. Owlbear. Get in on uh, command BPRD uh, for the next drawing. And thank you so much uh, for unlocking everything so far. And yeah, when we left off, you had just discovered uh, Eklund uh, has uh, a parking pass for Serrano Memorial Hospital and uh, showed it uh, to your friends and you are standing outside of his apartment in Baronsdale Heights. Well, hold on. If if he worked there, wouldn't he have like an employee pass? Maybe he's visiting someone there. If it were a temporary parking pass, it would be a paper ticket. Okay, so when I said I think I know where our suspect works. I might have been a little hasty. I was just <laughs> wrapped up in the drama of the whole thing. I want to be clear. I hope we all had a good moment of excitement. No, I think that we can, like, someone there would have talked to him. I have a question, Doc, because I haven't parked at your uh, hospital. Neither of us. Is yeah. uh, when you park at the hospital. Is it a case where you get one of these tickets and it's just whatever and then you'll pay it with a credit card or something on your way out or you get it validated? Or does it scan your license plate and read it on the way out? Because there are newer parking garages that do that and your license plate is tied to the ticket. Uh, yeah, so a couple questions about how my hospital works. <laughs> uh, and also what I see before me. Uh, is this a paper ticket or is this a hard card? A hard no. card would be indicative of something that had to, like, you go to an office, you get it, it'd stick around for a while, there's permanent. Yeah, here. this is a hard plastic card. Yeah, uh, this is this is definitely an employee. Okay, uh, so when I said I was a little hasty, I was a little was hasty and being hasty because I, I think I'm right. It means <laughs> you can take this to the hospital and check it against the database. I misunderstood what we were looking at. <laughs> that was like a ticket stub that you like threw away. <laughs> I want to turn a little bit to Benny and just kind of like aside, like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't used a hospital in a long time. So that's understandable. I used one today, but I walked. So yeah, who parks in the city? Anyway, all right, let's, uh, let's head to the hospital and, and check this to get in the records, Doc. Can you do that? It is not a permission generally granted to surgeons, but it is well, one mm -hmm. that we can ask for. Perfect. And if we can't ask for it, Ulez. <laughs> I would love to assist. <laughs> Excellent. Let's All right. Work then. Sorry? We travel inconspicuously to my place of work. Uh, yeah, and you, uh, head out, you are right now in Baronsdale Heights, Yard Hill is, you know, a short hike away, um, and, uh, you are walking down the street. Oh my mm. gosh, I just realized we won't have a blue badge, that weirds me, Sam, out so much. Like, Whoa. parking is gonna be hard? Huh? You have to pay at meters? Oh gosh. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh man. <laughs> like the, yeah. Um, so yeah, and you are walking down the street headed towards Serrano Memorial, uh, when you are completely surprised, um, nobody sees anything 
but each one of you in quick cessation feel a little prick and a shock and a prick and a shock and a prick and a shock and a prick and a shock. Oh, come on. And you all black out. <gasps> and... We are not amused. <laughs> you, uh... You start to come to, uh, and you smell. The first thing is like there's a musty smell, and, and and then you know your eyes start to come back. Is you know whatever the shock was kind of you know blurred your vision a little bit, and 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 you know the, the focus starts coming back to you, and uh, you look around, and it, it looks like you are in some kind of a storage room or something like uh, there are shelves, they're stocked with boxes uh, that have labels and you are all tied to chairs and looming over you is I say about nine or 10 very large people um, Say, you know, mostly kind of big, broad shoulder, muscular guys in all black kind of commando units, uniforms, uh, you know, sort of slightly paramilitary ish. And they just kind of like stand over you and none of them say anything. What are you doing? Huh? What did you say, Sam? I have the ones on the left. Okay. How many, sorry, how many did you say there were? Uh, let's Nine say there are 10. Yeah. An unreasonable and, number to take any section of the left. <laughs> um, and uh, you hear a voice uh, from uh, the other side of the room. Um, oh, don't, don't worry about the ones on the left. And uh, Mickey Bomber steps <laughs> over. <laughs> Uh, you know, going after the ones on the left, that's, I don't know, that would be inhospitable. You're my guests now, and you wouldn't want to be rude. I mean, what would, what would everybody think of you if you were rude to me? Uh, Kate and Dr. D'Alto, what would your uh, roommate, Dr. Uh, Abigail Fripp, who walks back and forth to the hospital alone at nights, think about you being rude to me? Or Benny? Your mothers who live on that farm way out in the middle of nowhere where it could take help quite a while to arrive. I don't think they would want you to be rude either. Or uh, Mr. Vigor, I can't seem to remember what your sister's name is, but I know I have it written down here somewhere. And then he looks at Ula as, I'll admit, I, I got nothing on you. Uh, and, and I'm, uh, oh. you know. I have a plant, if you would like. I do love it a lot. I have determined that it is my favorite. Oh, your favorite. Uh, no, that's okay. You can, uh, you can, you can keep the plant. Um, Thank you. See, I'm gonna level with you. You all are starting to become a little bit of a nuisance to me. Uh, I have big things on the horizon and, uh, okay, you know enough, it doesn't matter at this point, probably. I think you're going to like this. In fact, uh, it seemed pretty obvious to me. I, I kind of figured y'all knew when we last met, but I, I guess you didn't, uh, it didn't ever occur to you. Uh, I set Curtis up. I wanted the cluster to steal that truck. Because, you, and, oh my God, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. I wanted them to get that gizmo and to take it back to their lab. Where Eklund, that crazy, weird SOB, he'll start pulling it apart, trying to figure it out how it works. And then eventually... He will trip the bomb that I put in there that's going to blow that lab 
Eklund, and everything in it the kingdom come. It is not meant to be pulled apart. Now it is. No, we need it intact. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know when it's going to be. After the explosion, you all can go. But for now, you're my guests here with uh, with my friends, and uh, and I have I have plenty of friends, uh, guys, guys, and, and and he whistles, and 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 another say seven paramilitary guys file into the room, and they are now standing all around you, front and back. So we're all just going to be very patient. And uh, we're going to wait for it to be over. It could be a couple of minutes, a couple of hours, a couple of days. I don't know. I find it all very exciting, don't you? I've been waiting a whole week already. But it's going to happen. What are we being tied up with? Yep. <laughs> uh, you are all handcuffed uh, okay. to, to the seat. Um, and uh, we will say that they, they are. Are garrots? <laughs> I don't know what that word means. Oh, that's like the thing that that you piano wire like chokes. Oh yeah, <laughs> I read those in Black Widow comics. Ah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I mean, we just get them for free. <laughs> wow. And what are we sitting on? Uh, you are on chairs. Uh, we'll say that they are um, uh, they are bolted to the floor. And uh, then your hands are kind of through, you know, the chairs have like a kind of a metal back that holds up the back of the chair. Mm -hmm. and the way you are cuffed to them, you know, keeps your hands kind of inside the metal bars of the chair. May I disconnect one of my arms? <laughs> uh, let's make a, you are surrounded by like yeah. 17 paramilitary guys. Uh, make a coordination roll. Because uh, I guess we're going to consider to see how stealthy you are to see if you can okay. do this. I mean, for what it's worth, Ulez is just acting based on what they believe is the right thing to do. <laughs> uh, we said coordination. Seven? Seven. Um, you start fidgeting with one of your arms and one of those guys kind of grabs your arm and steadies it and he's just like just relax there i cannot and uh mickey bomberg says all right i'm bored now gentlemen keep an eye on them and uh he walks off out of the room and as he walks out of the room those paramilitary guys kind of tighten their circle around you and they're all watching very, very intently. And uh, hang on a sec. Ulez and Benny, while you are sitting there, you notice through uh, um, basically Across from where you are sitting, there is a window, and that window has sort of been painted over, you know, with black paint, so it can't be seen through. And you can see in the seam around that window, just when the, the little bit of light streaking through it, like, you know, you ever been in a bar and you see, like, someone blows out cigarette smoke and it goes through the stream of light, and when it passes through, you can see all the smoke, you know. Through that little bit of a stream of light, you see this kind of red cloud of gas seeping through the window and as it comes through it kind of spreads slowly around to those guys who are standing between you and the other side of the room and 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 as it starts to overtake them and uh beyond and and Kaden, you have not noticed this the red cloud yet uh as it starts to overtake them um you see those guys sort of start twitching a little and sniffing at the air. And then one of them turns to the other and 
punches him straight in the side <laughs> of the head. And they start all of a sudden diving at each other, punching, grabbing, clawing. Then one of them pulls out a sidearm and he shoots one of them like in right in right in, in the in the chest. And and guns start getting drawn, and and they at, at, as you are all the four of you are sitting there sh strapped to the chair. These guys just start absolutely tearing each other apart right in front of you. Well, and in uh, minutes, there's like a pile of them on the floor as the others are struggling with each other. Minutes, seconds, you know. What are you gonna say? I was gonna say we don't know that 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 they are not going to attack us or that that is not going to become of us. So I think Benny would be like, "Hey Doc, how how are you on lock picks on handcuffs?" Uh, I well, can... yeah, go. Uh, no, I mean, uh, I don't think uh, Caden uh, Cadrox is saying anything at the moment. Mm -hmm. They're tracking the fight instead and uh -huh. probably readied to bust everything apart if needed but yeah. <laughs> keeping an eye open to see if one of them makes the move because Caden went to uh the fire station oh yeah you know what what happens yeah um and i will say uh at this point Caden, um you have uh, both you and vion have slightly tracked uh this you know red mist or red cloud or whatever it is you know and you can see it kind of you know as it entered the room it was sort of high and and, and only sort of you know got to those guys who were standing up uh but it, it it sort of seems to be settling a tiny bit um uh i would like to i'm gonna tr i would like to try to phase through the chair uh okay um i don't know what you're wearing metal this is but... right now um yeah the handcuffs are uh steel is what handcuffs are made of which makes them level seven okay um, well you have cheap power... chairs and aluminum yeah <laughs> the chair Sorry. you might be able to face through yes the but chair you can handcuffs with you <laughs> yeah I, I i'm fine with that <laughs> Um, so that is, the chair is aluminum, you are at level, oh, you are at level four. So yeah, you can just do it. You just kind of stand up uh, or, or kind of push yourself through the back of the chair so that yeah. the handcuffs don't hit the chair now. Uh, and you are now free, you know, your body is free, although you are still wearing the handcuffs. Okay, Could great. I would like to- Handcuffs through the front of you so your hands are in front of you? Oh, wait, I can do that. Are you capable of that? I don't know if you're Oh yeah, no, I guess yeah. you can do that. Yes, <laughs> yet. Wow. Um, I will say though, that wasn't a thought that I had. So, oh, so yeah. Vion himself is mind. still turns to Ulez, turns his back to Ulez and and asks them, uh, uh Ulez, please take my hand. And but okay. it's like, you know, like it's like fingertips to fingertips. Yeah. Um, great. And I would like to phase Ulez out of the chair as well. Okay, yeah, you can pull Ulez out. Um, what are you doing, Caitlin? And, uh, sorry, Benny and uh, um, Caden. I have no way to get myself out of this, so I'm waiting. <laughs> Caden? You have, you have the ability to melt things. Never powerless. Uh, uh, Catrax is, is still tracking the fight. Like, really, they are holding on any of their action on the theory that... Um, until someone comes aggressively toward any of us because they're trying to see what patterns provoke aggression from each other on the theory that, like, if they get up and start moving, that might proc them, in effect, toward us. Uh, so they're staying still until they have a reason to not stay still. Cadrax is in threat assessment uh, okay. and evaluation. I like that. Um, tell you what, uh, make an intellect roll. I just want to see, just to see what what, what you get from your observations. Yeah. Uh, that's an eight. Okay. Um, yeah, you are watching for now. This is all happening extremely fast, you know, everything that we're talking about. And uh, the fight is almost over already. A couple of these guys have shot each other in there. You know, the ones who are shot are lying on the ground, kind of clutching themselves and moaning. A few of them have ran out now. A bunch of them are just unconscious on the floor. And uh, you have seen that the this, you know, the, the, the red cloud kind of hangs at, at, the, at, at that top of the room. And, and if it's 
descending, it's descending extremely slowly. It doesn't seem to sink very fast. Uh, you know, what that might tell you about its density in relation to the air, you know, or whatever. Um, and uh, while that is going on, Benny, take a point of determination. You burst into flames. How okay, <laughs> understandable. <laughs> Have a nice day. Oh, boy. Okay. <sighs> Whole and body or just like parts? So head to toe, bursting. Oh, shit. And, uh, uh, How close am I to my friends? Uh, you are kind of close to Caden. Um, oh, I'm going to lean away as far yeah, as I can. Ulez uh, are already up and out of their chairs. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't do that, but it's happening anyway. So just uh, wide berth, I guess. And she's just gonna lean as far as she can while she's attached to this chair, so she's not gonna hurt. I'm gonna rush over and try to phase the dock out of the chair. Okay. You do that. Benny, I want you to make a coordination roll. Coordination? Okay. Okay. Ooh, I moved all my dice. Okay. Mm, four! <laughs> you try and pull your chair away and your chair kind of, you know, catches and, and, and falls over and you are right next to like these, like, like I said, shelves that were full of boxes. And as you hit the shelves, like the shelf kind of totters, you know, teeters over you and, 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 and it kind of uh, comes down and all the boxes slide off the shelf and the shelf just pounds down on you. Um, Benny, you have you have ten stamina, um, but I am going to say, uh, all right, you are going to lose. Hang on. Oh boy! All right, you are going to lose five stamina for that. Oh. And I'm giving you the quality of uh, the temporary quality of stunned. So yeah. it's going to fall on you, and you are just pinned now. I got uh, pinned and just slapped across the face with the large shelf. Ulez and uh, Vion, you got the doc out of the chair. That is successful. Ulez, what are you doing? Uh, by the way, uh, sorry, I should mention the two of you. Um, have you you got out of your chairs? Uh, wow, how do I ask this? Did you stand, <laughs> did you fully stand up into the red like? Gas yeah, Caprox is dropping low and is going to have to army crawl immediately because <laughs> the existence of Benny has put a further time lock, uh, time clock on this because convection. Do we breathe if we're still ghosts? Uh, when you are in intangible form, you do not need air. Okay. But you also, of course, can't touch or do anything. So Correct. Um... Uh, I don't right know. He is helping the doc, right? So you are tangible again. Oh, yeah. then I yeah. would be standing there. <laughs> so yeah, you are. Oh, you're just standing there. Yeah. Okay. Waiting for Vion. Ulez needs help often. Ulez, I give you a point of determination. Um, as your quality, strangely protective, kicks in, and you run over to Benny. No. Uh, it, it's just almost like instinctual and. Uh, as the shelf that is on top of her starts to catch fire, uh, you look for a way to deal with the problem. What do you do? I try to blast the boxes with the powers that should come out of my hands. Uh, there is no blast. <sighs> It's just a horrible, horrible moment where Ulez has their hands out and you can just hear the crackling of the flames from Benny and like whatever is left is still crumbling around them as like the groans of the bodies in the background and the chaos and the, the air. Um, um, I, um, I can try and I don't know why this isn't working. I'm so sorry. Uh, I think Ulis then is just going to remove their arm because they need both their hands right now um, and detach one, let's say their pinky finger and use that as something that they can try to unlock their own handcuffs with. They need full Ooh. mobility right now. Okay, um, make a intellect roll. 
can I utilize my um, like mechanical my knowledge of mechanics? Yeah, absolutely. That's mechanical. Yeah, okay. lots of mechanical. Six, ten. Easily. Yeah. You you're that finger, I don't know, it's got some kind of like Swiss Army knife thing where you're able to like pull out a thing and you know quickly open the lock. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's no problem for you. Uh, and the handcuffs are off. Uh, uh, anyway, okay. While you are doing that, hang on. Uh, what are the rest of you doing while, while they are picking the lock? Uh, Caden. Uh, I uphold my oath. Uh, I'm, go I'm uh, belly crawling toward the bookcase. It's gonna hurt. Uh, and I'm going to leg kick it because actually you have the most strength in your legs anyway. And I'm not deadlifting it. That involves standing up. Uh, <laughs> so this is effectively a quad press the bookshelf, the flaming bookshelf off of uh, Benny because I uphold my oath. And I, uh, uh, that mm. sounds like strength. And yeah, kick that as a point of determination because you're upholding your oath and, you know, to, to the detriment of yourself. You could burn yourself here. So <laughs> that sounds like, sounds like a strength feat to me. Um, so you just make a strength roll. Against. Oof. Okay. Uh, that's a six for me. It's, it's a what for you? Six. Six. Uh, that bad, actually. The level okay. of the book. You, yes. you, you start kind of, you, you hit it and it doesn't quite budge, but you keep pushing and it starts to kind of slide. And Benny, you, you, you kind of feel it and, and, you know, but, you know, you, you are still in flames and kind of are. No, oh, my hands are behind my back and I'm tied to oh, this yeah. chair. Your yeah. hands are still behind your back. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Oh my God! We unlocked the lore drop. I think. Oh, uh, oh. thank you so much, everybody! Wow! No, thank you, Jet. Wow! Oh yeah! Oh my God! Good lore drop. And uh, uh, and it is not too late to get in the BPRD drawing. So uh, command BPRD if you want to do that. Uh, and Benny, you uh, yes, you feel the flaming bookshelf slowly sliding across you as you still cannot move as you are temporarily stunned, mm -hmm. and it feels like it is taking an eternity, but. Finally, it, it pushes back and you feel it come off of you and the weight is at least lifted even if you know you are still tied to the chair and on the floor yeah. and you just feel, you know, shell shocked. It, it just, you know, your whole body from the, the, the feeling of that thing crashing down on you, you can barely move. And uh, this is, is stunned, no movement or is stunned, I lose this turn. Which I think makes sense if that is. <laughs> yeah, no, you you don't get a turn right now. Think, yeah. um, and uh, what are you doing right now, Vion? Uh, the sh bookshelf was kicked off. Is that right? The bookshelf is off. Okay. I would, and then Benny's just like knocked over, tied okay. to it on fire, tied to a chair with my hands behind my back, on on the ground. <laughs> As you do. Yeah. I am going to try to grab Benny while on fire and ghost <laughs> both of us to set Benny up. I don't know what that's going to do flame wise. Yeah, we have to fire. <laughs> my pain stuff, but I mean, it's, I I got to I got to play this against myself for spirit of justice. Like <laughs> it's it's just like it has to happen. Like there's no choice here. Yeah, I buy that. Um okay, but you are you to move Benny, you can't be in ghost form, which means, yeah, you're going to take damage because that is yeah. the effect of... Like, damage. I'm going to try to do it very quickly. Okay, like so you... let's get a coordination roll. And, okay. Uh, Benny, what level is your aura? You were at five. Okay. Um, make a coordination roll. I'm just going to set a difficulty for it. In my mind. Okay. How did you do? I got an eight. Okay. Uh, that... Okay. That is a success. You are able to pull Benny. You are trying to pull her off of the chair, right? Like the same way you did with the others. Yeah. Okay. You yeah, are able through the to chair. Off through the chair. Uh, but you take uh, like it's five. Let's say you take uh, three damage. So you are down to four. <laughs> I've been I've been through worse. <laughs> I got shot with an arrow. I'm like, all right, let's let's do this. <laughs> Ulez, you are standing over Benny, uh, who, um, much like that overwatered flower, is not looking too good right now. What do you want to do? I am so sorry. I couldn't help. I let. 
Benny is ghosted with Dion. For- um, no, Benny is not ghosted. Uh, or, or Benny was ghosted, I guess, when he'd been pulled out. And okay. now I assume you have both gone back to... Um, are I, you still holding on to me? Are you... I'm gonna. I, I honestly, I think I'm still holding on to Benny unless instructed otherwise. Just because I like you're. I don't think ghost flames can hurt other people. So I'm just gonna hold on to you until we kind of get like a good plan in place. Whether like whether that's the case or not, if Benny is dazed, if I can't take an action, I can, can I take make like an, a confused action or something? Like she wouldn't let you. <laughs> She doesn't, she gets really freaked out when people are around her when she's on fire. And the fact that you've grabbed her is scaring her um, and she doesn't want to hurt you. So she probably would be trying to push you off of her. Benny, do you, do you have max determination right now? I do. <laughs> uh, okay. then, then let's just say it's like, yeah, we're just going to play it a story. Then it's just like, mm-hmm. as you are trying, as you, as you pull her through before mm-hmm. you can use her again, she just punches you in the oh, face. Oh no! As she's, sort of like, as she's wailing around, you know, or, or pushes him, you know, but, yeah. but more she's full on the, fire. She's got her hands under her back, so she's probably like wiggling away from you, or like trying to like elbow you to stop touching her. She doesn't want you to get burned. Okay, <laughs> since since we we're at max determination, can can I just throw this in? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, if if Benny pushes me away, I have a feeling Benny is the one that went through the her own body to push me with her hands in front. And so I get pushed away, but I do now see how I can ghost my cuffs through myself. <laughs> so I am just like, okay, yeah, absolutely. Oh wait, that's like, okay, boom, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> that's great, that's great. Um, yeah, and like, yeah, you're sitting there you're like, ah. Uh, <laughs> and ben, yeah, you. by the way, you take another point of damage, so you're down to three, because uh, Benny pushed you away. Oh. Sorry. Again, no, I've been worse. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to roll for it out because it was a quick tap. So I'm just yeah. going to say one point. Uh, Ulez, you are standing, uh, I guess, still over Benny ish. Um, Benny is on the floor, still in flames. Uh, Vion has pushed, Vion has been pushed away. Uh, Kaden is uh, watching the room, I think. And uh, what are you doing? Holding up my pinky finger. I can take your handcuffs off, Vion. <laughs> I, I need to help. I, I I have not been able to be useful yet. Oh, yeah, th- absolutely. And I would like to unghost in order to get my handcuffs off. Yeah, and uh, you unghost, and uh, you, Ulez, um, very matter-of-factly, uh, un- unlock the handcuffs, throw them on the floor, screw your finger back on, turn around to Benny, and uh, I'm going to give you a point of determination um, based on... Uh, your uh, strangely protective quality. Okay. Without even thinking about it, you just spin around to Benny, your hands raise up before you, and you fire one of your blasts out of your hands right at her. And it just hits her, only instead of wilting and dying like those plants used to do, this time, Benny, you feel this healing power overtake you. And you feel those the pain from the injuries start to disappear, and you, you, the shock kind of goes away. And uh, we're going to put you back to seven stamina. And Ulez, your programming now confirms for you uh, that your uh, uh, excuse me. Your programming now confirms for you uh, that your reconfiguration matrix uh, is back online and you can now have the power of healing level two. Excellent. (laughs) And you have your original blast still as well. Uh, You, I'm just gonna say your system sort of lets you know that that blast is still in effect and it works exactly as it did before. And you now also have a blast that allows you to heal others but not yourself um i'm gonna say your your programming just informs you of all of that and uh benny you are kind of it, it's so weird it's like one second you feel like you've been hit by a car and the next second it's like you, you're kind of able to shake it off 
Does that ground me enough to try to make a willpower check to not be on fire anymore? <laughs> Tell you what, give it a shot. Make a willpower yeah. check. Oh boy. All right. Nine. Okay. With a nine, with basically the, the fight in, in the room kind of over and things having calmed down, there is a pile of kind of dead and injured uh, paramilitary dudes on the floor. You can hear some scuffling from outside, uh, but things are generally a lot calmer now and you are able to kind of center yourself you know, in, through, in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the end, uh, and you calm and the flames come back down and you are okay. And there's and a huge burn spot on the floor around you. Like it's just, the floor is just destroyed. The yeah. bookshelf is still on fire. I'm, did shelf, I set a bunch of shit on fire? The bookshelf is still on fire. Uh, it oh is, you know, um, uh, I, I, what I will say is if, if one of you want to, uh, you are able to just quickly uh, put that out by-, by, oh, by yeah, throwing. would put her tap, tap, flap her hands on it because she does that anytime. <laughs> She yeah, starts up on fire on herself. She'll just smother it really quick. Her, hand, her hands are still in handcuffs, and she's just gonna like chill out and then roll over and start like slapping things with her hand, hands together. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you are able to get that fire out. Um, and uh, yeah, and she, I think she ends up like she like thunks her head on the ground. She hasn't really gotten up yet. And she's like, "Oh, jeez, okay." <laughs> and she kind of like looks over at you guys and goes, "I am so sorry." Is everybody okay? Uh, What's yeah. Just up ahead. Because, uh, like, I'm on my back because I just donkey kicked something. So, or not donkey, other way. Yeah. Uh, looking up, like, it has the concentration dissipated? Because that is Cadrax's foremost concern in this mm. moment. Like, do they need to bust open a wall to increase airflow? Oh. Mm, that red smoke? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Again, Cadrax saw the fire station. And you want to see to a bunch of powered people. Yeah, you still perceive the red cloud kind of, you know, hanging there at the, you know, by the ceiling, you know, sort of hangs by the top of the room. And, and, and you know, it has, there definitely seems to be less of it than there was before. Um, the room is open in, in a lot of places. You saw it come in through the window. You look over there now. I mean, I can crack a window. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can. You can, you can just smash it. It's just a window, so like you could literally just yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. Um, I don't think I, I. I should probably also get my handcuffs off. Oh yes, I can help you. Oh, thank you. Uh, mind to take my pinky off to help out. Chemicals. I knew it was environmental. <laughs> this is very worrisome. Stay low. Sorry, I'm gonna make a note that you have a lock pink pinky, so we don't. <laughs> yeah. a lock pinky. Well, mechanically put this in because I just kind of yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like this. No, it stays. Um. So you you do break the window, or or what did you say you just did? Well, I'm sorry. What was the last thing? Uh, the last thing was the handcuffs. The last thing. Anything else? Um, if You're there's now, you always are. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to stay low, but also getting out of this room is enough for them in this moment. And, and honestly, without significant consultation, they are going to leave in the direction that Mickey Bomberg did. Because some other people went out the doors, which means there are doors that I can go out of. And I want to follow that guy and uh, give the person who threatened my roommate a very sad day. So you just kind of like get up and like follow after where everybody went? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, Are we going? The three of you just see Caden just bounce off the floor and with like, you know, military style determination, just charge out into the other room. What do you oh, do? Are we going? Are we going with? Uh, uh, what do we do? I'm going to rush over to like one of the piles of folks to see if they have anything useful on them, like any communicators or any like ID cards or anything we might need for this building. Uh, okay. You search the bodies, um, and, uh, some of these guys are still alive and kind of gripping their wounds and, 
you find um, now, most of them are armed. None of them have any kind of ID. Uh, one of them has a set of keys, uh, and you take it. Uh, Great. So what we'll call that you know, mysterious set of keys. You don't know what it goes to. Um, but a couple of them are kind of clutching, uh, you know, their, at their wounds and, and just kind of moaning and, you know, help, help. Uh. Uh, yeah. Hey, listen, we're going to get you help, okay? And I take the keys and with my burner phone, I would like to call uh, 911 and just kind of put it on the ground. Or just be like, there's an emergency and I'm just going to put it on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They can track it. Yep. <laughs> And you do I that. Think. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I'm going to nod to the other two. And and uh, maybe we should follow the doc. Yeah, correct. I will assist Benny so that she has free use of hands. She pulls her hands away from you yeah. as they are surely still extremely hot. And you are ready to Yeah, those cups are probably. Hot and yet we cope. Let, let it cool down in first. Okay. I don't want to hurt you anymore. Thank you. And I I'm good. Well. I'm good. Um, I'm gonna try I'm gonna stay cuffed until they cool down. <laughs> Smart. It's and steel and steel gets more brittle once it's if it's cooled slowly, but it also has like a melting point of like fifteen hundred degrees Celsius, so I know I couldn't do anything. <laughs> I can't get out of these, but I don't know. So she's just gonna hang, she's just gonna still be. <laughs> Someone's been doing research. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So you are gonna hold on to those uh, while they cool uh, off, and uh, we're gonna say that at, by this point, that red cloud has mostly dissipated. Uh, it, it seemed. Question. Sorry about yeah. the red cloud. When it came in, did it seem to move with purpose, or was it just like? generic like if you put like a fog machine smoke filling a room because it's just like gas you know it's it okay. sort of just seemed like gas seeping through the window as far as you know it seemed okay. to it's uh, lighter than air they were standing we were sitting cool. yeah. just wanted to double check that's the i i also was like hey, what ha? and then i i mean do you want to look around to see if you can find clues or that kind of stuff or i think we should go get the doc <laughs> so <laughs> uh so you all follow the doc um and uh yeah in the other room uh doc uh you charge uh through and uh you find yourself coming from behind uh the counter in three county electric and plumbing uh you are in that back area um that you only saw from the other side previously and uh in front of you is the counter, and to the right there is a door that is a glass door that looks like uh, on the other side of it you see a desk. Uh, it looks like there is an office, and the uh, blinds are pulled over like a little window that is uh, next to the door, and you can't see in, uh, or and, and you don't necessarily see anybody in that office from where you are standing. Uh, and uh, ahead of you is uh, the exit. May I ping? Oh, the building? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, the, yeah, make a roll. This is probably relatively easy for you. You're in the building. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think that's a 10. OK, yes, a yeah. 10. 10, yes, it's plenty. <laughs> um, you are in a building. It is not a fancy special building. It's just like you know, brick and mortar. Uh, so. Yeah, you detect um, there are uh, uh, there are two people in the office. Uh, one of them is hiding behind the door. Another one is in a corner of the room. Uh, and on the other side of the exit, there are uh, you would count uh, six guys. You would guess are those paramilitary guys who are just waiting right out front. Um, how long did the ping take? Uh, oh, it's pretty instant. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, but it's it's a it's a moment like when you stop at a crossroad. So, and and if you want to catch up for me for the purpose of plot, you're more than welcome. Uh, I would like to catch up, 
and I'd like to turn to you, Doc, and go, all right, two questions, Doc. Yes. One, how's your core strength? Excellent. Great. Uh, two, how you feel about being turned into a ghost? Uh, it was agonizingly painful when Curtis did it. Uh, oh, geez. Well, I'm sorry about that. Uh, for the purposes of two in there, P pardon six out front, two in there. Listen, Shall I know we? this is listen, <laughs> I'm not much of a fighter, I'm gonna be honest, but I'm getting pretty good at turning on and turning off these powers. If you don't mind me riding on your back, <laughs> I can turn you into a ghost and turn you off a ghost if you want to leap through, do a punch, ghost back, leap through, do another punch, ghost back. I can turn you corporeal and incorporeal right back and forth. Uh, if you can deal with that pain, for you. <laughs> they are good to go. Great. <laughs> I leap onto the doctor's back. Okay. So are you going out front or into the office? Uh, we are ghost right now. So office. Office. Uh, Ulez and Benny, what are you doing while they're doing that? Are you just watching or are you? I am impressed by those tactics. What should we do? I guess we could keep watch. Uh, and if anyone shows up, we deal with them. We should keep in mind there is somebody who has the powers of red smoke. Yep. Mm -hmm. We will stay low. Yes. We are the shortest in the party. <laughs> <laughs> Won't take much. <laughs> <laughs> to keep, so we'll keep an eye out for red smoke. Keep an eye out for people noticing what's happening in here. Correct. Cool. I'm into that. Okay, Caden and uh, um, Beyond, you pass through the door. <laughs> and as you pass through, immediately you see just to your left behind the door, there's one of these paramilitary guys who was sort of waiting for somebody, only you, know, you pass through and now he is sort of startled uh, I'm going to give you first attack because he is startled. Uh, I'm not even going to make you roll for initiative um, on that. Uh, what would you like to do? Hang on. Where's his character sheet? For clarity, is Mickey the other person in the room? You do not see another person in the room where you are right now. Okay. Whoa. Okay, sorry. <laughs> what Look do I see where I pinged? You look around the room, and, the, and where you ping, there is a closet, and the door is closed. Got it. Cool. Uh, All right, then I will clear out the hench first. I don't know what's happening in my background. I'm going to have to look. <laughs> uh, 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 yes, it's it's uh, strange October snow in just my neighborhood of Port Ruby, apparently, not any of the rest of it. Uh, oh, there we go. It burns uh, later in the day. <laughs> yes, yes. It's, the weather at Port Ruby changes very fast. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you zip past this guy. You look into the corner. You do not see anybody, but you see a closet door that is closed. This guy, startled, is sort of like, Bleh. it's all happening very quickly. What do you do, Caden? Uh, introduce my elbow uh, to the base of his skull. Because we got behind, so... Uh, That's prowess. Night switch. Yes. Ooh, yeah. Thank you, baby. 12. Max die. Oh, oh wow. Okay. So <laughs> that is a major success. Uh, nope, a massive success. And you, what is your prowess? Six? Um, my, uh, my prowess is six, but I think uh, the strength is the damage. Uh, so that's five, the same as my baton. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you you absolutely clobber that dude, uh, and you deal five damage to him. He is still on his feet, but he is absolutely is massive just well. a, what? Is massive in part uh, stunning as well on a, uh, a bludgeon melee like that. Actually, massive. Yeah, that might be. Actually, you might get a slam on that. Now that I think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's my damage thing? Sorry, bear with us, folks. Uh, do. Yeah, actually, yes, it is a slam on a maximum damage. So, I'll spend uh, the next panel getting up and can perform no other actions. Yeah, what we're gonna say is that you 
elbow him, and it's like one of these, you just crack one side of his head, and then his other side of his head flies over and hits the door on the other side, just essentially cracking the other side of his head, and he just plops down. And he is not quite unconscious, but he is completely dazed and cannot do anything. So he is not unconscious, but you go again. We go again. Um, would you care to? Uh, I, I think it's just sort of, uh, Cadrax looks real quickly, eyebrows raised just like a little, would you care for a taste, good sir? Uh, but entirely <laughs> up to you. Um, I would like to hop off and just like go for a punch. And I think I honestly stop and I'm like, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not very good at this. I'm going to be honest. I'm not very good. It's all you. And I just kind of like <laughs> step aside <laughs> and I'll stomp the same spot. You know what, uh, Vion, I'm going to give you a point of determination. There as a reward for honoring your quality of be kind always. Uh, oh, thank you. I get one. Great. Too kind, too kind to throw a punch. I think, uh, <laughs> help with man. Um, and, uh, okay. So wait, just make sure I'm, I'm good here. I have Benny with two, Vion with two, Caden with one, Ulez with one, and the community with Pot with one. I think I only have one. Uh, Vion, you only have one? Okay. I have maxed out because I couldn't get any more earlier. Oh, right. Okay. I was being mean to myself and my party. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had two because you've invoked my trouble. Like, I'm just so heckin' protective of my friends. Protective? Huh? <laughs> oh, you know what? I, I, uh, yeah. I, I invoked spirit of justice. So you're right. I have two. That's my bad. Okay, so my count wasn't yeah. completely you're, wrong. You're correct. It was only mostly wrong. Uh, GM uh, is right. No, GM is right. <laughs> so three, two, one, two, one. Okay. Um, and yeah, you, uh, you don't hit that guy. What do you do, Caden? Stomp. It, Stomp. it was the. He, he looked at me like I don't think I can do this. I understand. I, I am not even going to make you roll for it. Um, you just finish him any old way you want, and uh, yeah, you you reach back and do some kind of kickboxing stance, and just like deliver just like a sharp stomp to like the the side of his head, and he just goes out like a light. Uh, I'd like to do just a slightly more detailed ping through that closet because Mickey Bomberg, well. He sets up bombs, apparently. He does them at the cluster. I'm concerned before I blast open that closet and all of his insides uh, that it might have some negative consequence for my friends. Make a ping roll. Uh, uh. Uh, <laughs> 10 again. I need to start using the dice tray. 10 again? <laughs> uh, OK. Um, you see that Mickey is carrying a handgun, uh, but it seems to be, you know, it is just a handgun. He does not have anything. Okay, I can get shot, no big deal. Yeah, nothing huge. Like, he, he doesn't have a bazooka or a bomb or anything like that. He just has a gun. Nothing on the closet door or anything about that. Great. You do um, not detect anything like that. No, I mean, you did really well on that ping, and it's, you know, it, it seems to basically like he is hiding in the closet. Um, I'm gonna hop on your back again, Doc, and ghost both of us. Great. Uh, I will uh, take my piggyback through the closet. Uh, now, with one million percent fewer crossbow bolts. Mm -hmm. I, see, I checked, I checked for you, Vion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That, <laughs> I've like had a bad track happens. record. <laughs> <laughs> see, I didn't even think of it. Uh, I haven't learned my lesson. Um, <laughs> great, we enter the closet. Yeah. And oh, upon... yeah. you, you go in. It, it's it's easy. Okay, great. And is it just like a closet? It's not like a secret entrance. He's just like hiding in the closet. Yeah, it's basically like a coat closet. Uh, you know, kind of like a little walk-in coat closet for his business. Uh, looks like you know to hang up you know clients' coats when they come and visit. And he is just standing there. And when you push through the door, he just kind of backs up to the the far wall, and then he kind of just throws his gun down. And he's like, "All right, all right, all right, all right. You got me. You got me. You got me." Um, I unghost. 
hop off I hop off the dock's back, which unghosts the dock, and I unghost as I'm standing by the gun. I put my foot on it and I would like to ghost and turn the gun into a ghost as well. Ghost. Okay, you, phase, I, you phase the gun yeah. out. Yeah. And then I'm gonna pick it up and just so it's like because like you know, I would kick it away, but we're in a closet. So I just want that out of the equation. Yeah. Um, so you have the gun now. Great. And Mickey Bomberg says, All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh so what happens now? Uh, why don't we get out of here? And he kind of pushes past you and opens the closet door and he walks around into his office and he sits down behind his desk and he says, Ah, all right. Yes. So what, do, what do we do here? Here's what I don't understand. The notion of threatening loved ones. I, I, I understand it's intended to instill fear and, and Cadrax takes a seat at like the spot where guests sit. But to me, it seems like it leaves me no choice but to escalate. Why should I not? Make a willpower roll. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can find Mickey's feet here. To do. I, should, I, would, I would love to understand. My I would love would to know why. Max and that gun. We will say, Benny and Ulez, you have joined them in the room now so that you can just watch and hear all this. Yeah, we just... meandered on in, you know, as they were ghosting and like they walked over to the table. We were just like, yeah, this is, we'll just follow. We'll just stand back here. Not to make light of making this situation more stressful, but the nine one one was called, and so I would like to keep an ear out for sirens or oh yeah, like we gotta <laughs> like go. <laughs> uh, it, man, very it, bad. it has so, only been a couple of minutes since that happened in game time. This is all going yeah. very quickly. Okay. Uh, so for now, you don't hear anything, but I will keep I'm in mind listening. you are listening. Um, oh. <laughs> make, where is that? Uh, uh, in you, Ruby. Yes. Yeah. You, wow, it's such a powerful city. You can hear the music all the way from here. Um, <laughs> you, you got a nine. Okay. So Mickey Bomber is going to spend a point of determination, which you get, Caden. Uh, and he's going to invoke his quality, I'm not afraid of anyone. And your role is. What we're going to call with that uh, a moderate failure. He does not really seem afraid of you as you are leaning in. He just, he, he very calmly just listens. Yeah. Does he explain? Uh, oh, so he looks at you. Oh, uh, are you actually waiting for an explanation? I, th I thought that was rhetorical. You're not just trying to make some kind of point? No, it's, it's an issue of, of, tactics i suppose but not one that's terribly clear to me it's not a tactic we've ever used well you know i do what i have to and frankly uh it's effective i mean i suppose it would have worked thus far seeing as you're alive you're not gonna touch me i do i blast him <laughs> you blast him? <laughs> no. You're not gonna touch me. <laughs> he did it last time. I don't understand. I um uh I would like to invoke not from around here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um so that brings you back down to one, I to think. One, yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, you can blast him. 14. Okay. And like we said, Mickey Bomberg, if we were casting him, he, he's Billy Crystal. So, you know, while he, he has a ton of willpower and uh, he's, he, you know, he, he's very powerful in a uh, criminal sense. Um, he is basically just a, a 60 something year old man. And, uh, you said you got what? 14. You just unleash your voice and blast him into the wall, and he goes 
I mean, through the wall, out into the street, and just out, splayed out over the sidewalk. Completely out cold. Um, I, yeah, I, well, I would like to run over and uh, check his pulse and see if he's still alive. Uh, you check his pulse. Uh, he is... He does have a pulse, but he is unconscious, and you know he's now bleeding kind of all over his face from having smashed the, the pavement. Yeah. Okay. I would like to turn him into a ghost. I want to have a conversation with this gentleman. Uh. Well, you phase him, but he's unconscious. Damn! I unphase <laughs> him. Shoot! I thought. Dang! I thought I had a whole thing planned. All right. Um, oh, I'm sorry. What? I I assume Vion said that out loud and yeah, looks up and did I, did I act too impulsively? Uh, listen, you did what you did. I probably would have done the same. Um, this guy's no good business. It was cathartic. Yeah. He threatened all of our loved ones, and and for that, I think that you know there was some justice that needed to be served. Um, that said, if we can save him and patch him up, it might play to our advantage. Or, and I'm kind of looking. Well, he was blasted out into the street, right? Yeah, we can walk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, in fact, what I'll say is that some people out on the street, because this oh. is day, you know, right here in Greenhouse Circles, we should. Go. Okay. People are starting to take notice, and maybe you start to hear those sirens off in the distance. Will you grab him and we can return back to uh, uh, your your abode? Do you oh, want kidnapping? Him? Yeah, I don't know about that one. That's not a child. <laughs> I, this one got me as well. Uh, <laughs> any kind of abduction is referred to as kidnapping at any stage in life. It's not just reserved to the juveniles. Understood. Thank you. Uh, do we want maybe to, like, we kidnap? Okay, so like he kidnapped us. I don't know if that's the thing we want to do when there are cops coming. I Should want we... to learn about where my ship is. <sighs> I do not want it to explode. It is not meant to be taken apart. That's we, a good point. In your apartment? That's like the my big hang up here. Is, do you want him in the place where you live? Is there uh, another location? At the storage facility. Yeah. The dumpster where I was found? That's, That's the place awesome. business. There, there are going to be people working there. Ah. Uh, uh, or the one where we fought all of those many gentlemen and then the cluster was hit uh, by the truck. That was, that was a good day. Just like an abandoned mm -hmm. warehouse? Yeah, it was that, that warehouse that we kind of... That just, yeah. I think that's probably the place to go. It'd be easiest uh, if we had a vehicle. I can't really imagine taking them on the yeah. We on can't. The uh, okay, wait. I'm 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 sorry. I'm I'm a little confused. <laughs> where, where are we going? We're gonna go to the place that we had the fight three weeks ago, two weeks ago. Sandy was abducted. They held Sandy hostage in an abandoned a lot of it's destroyed but yeah um, but there were other abandoned warehouses a, in that the key line factory right yeah. um, yes factories okay. yeah. is it near no I'm, I'm, I'm trying I, I don't know if i should actually intervene here i just want to make sure somebody is clear is that like mickey does not you know the cluster has your pod not mickey yes yeah. Yeah. mickey has information he had yeah uh oh um, actually you know what he doesn't because he doesn't know where it is he just knows a bomb's gonna go off right yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I don't, he does not know i want to make sure that you're clear that okay. Mickey does not know he all he knows is he gave them the bomb and the bomb will eventually yeah. explode um yeah i was like i don't think we want him <laughs> i think the police are coming to and he can deal with all of the bodies in his back room oh yes and many of his uh Law enforcement officers are no longer being paid off. Yeah, yeah that goes. I don't know how much though. <sighs> that was unfortunate. Ah. Uh, um, you know, okay. We, have to we to get the room. If there's any useful information in here while he's unconscious, and we have a few rare moments with a uh, master criminal's uh, proceedings files, so on. Is there anything we in, anything incriminating we could leave out on the desk for the? <laughs> anything incriminating we wish to obtain? 
From okay. Who, yeah. Who wants to do a quick search? <laughs> well, I, I, I want to loot the filing cabinet. Uh, I saw people do this with Hugo, and it was very, very useful for them to like have the ledgers and things like that. Those were very important. You're right. Uh, so I'm, I'm like, oh, this is another crime person. Okay. We now take the crime papers. Can we get him off the sidewalk though? Like, I'm gonna do that. Oh, I thought we ghosted him on. Oh, did we bring him back in? I'll ghost him inside. Yeah. Okay, you bring him back in. Uh, there's a hole in the wall at this point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and uh, Caden, make a search roll, uh, an intellect roll for that turn. Ooh. Eight. What I will say is uh, you are going through the file. Most of it is really just plumbing and electrical supply stuff. But you do find a, a packet of information uh, that is about um, a particular blend of plastic explosive, uh, like the, detailing the chemical formula for a particular blend of plastic explosive. Is there contact info? It's just there have been so many explosives recently and it's been itching at me. No, it's it's kind of, you know, the pirate's cookbook kind of thing, uh, okay. it's, you know, a little unofficial, but uh okay. you're about a about a detonator. Like is this solely a time detonator? Oh or yeah. Uh like what kind of explosive are we dealing with? Uh but if it's if there's any kind of remote detonation, that means it would have to be pinging back and forth, and that could be used uh, via radio signal to locate later. It's, it's, uh, a, it's, a, it's, a, long, it's a long shot based mm -hmm. on the kind of detonation described, but I will look for it. You can Doc, try and throw it in, yeah. Uh, like well, throw it. well, actually, Doc, do you mind if I check that out really quickly? You are much more proficient in analyzing human documentation than I. Be my guest. Oh, you're being very kind. I was actually just going to use some ghost powers really quick, and I would like to use post cognition on this specific paper that's scrawled. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's think about that for a second. <laughs> okay. Make your power roll. Um, and that's going to be for post cognition. It is. All right, here we go. Okay, that is going to be a six. That is going to be a six. Uh, so, do to do. Uh, hang on. Sorry, sorry. Okay, with a six, you see Mickey Bomberg. Suddenly you are absorbed, you know, into one of your visions, and you see Mickey Bomberg sitting at the desk in this room, and this packet is right in front of him, his hand on it, and there's two men sitting in the seat across seats across from him, their face is a little shadowy the vision not quite clear um but you can tell that they are talking about this bomb and mickey is, uh, says and and when he removes that hatch and the other guy says kaplooey and mickey says how big is the blast and the guy says ah. It's going to take out a city block or so, but we need to be sure. And Mickey leans back in his chair and he's like, well, there'll be collateral damage, but at least I'll know where the lab is. And then the vision ends. Okay, Doc, this is actually not remote detonated. This is, I think, like a sensor-based sort of explosion. It's when the latch gets removed, it's going to go off. And it's going to take out about a city block. Then we have no time to further threaten this man. We need to find the lab and we need to find it now. We should leave these schematics on the desk, right? We can take some photos of these if we want to look it up later. But if people are coming here to investigate this place, maybe it would 
behoove us for them to find this in his possession. As long as we find that laboratory first. <laughs> no one is going to take apart your craft with us. Thank you. So should we just book it over to the hospital? I think we should get out of here as soon as possible because I think we've been around. We've overstayed our welcome. I am going to take some photos of the the makeup of this in case we can find of the like the bomb they're making just so I don't know if we can look into it more later, find some, I don't know. I think that will allow us to spend relaxed time fi figuring out the mechanism of uh, uh, diffusing mm -hmm. rather than having to do it in the moment. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference that taking a picture of a schematic and then studying a it little bit of preparation. Yeah. 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 No okay. one wants to do it when you see that ticky clock. Mm -mm. Feel bad. Mm -hmm. We so should... yeah, you have those pictures. Okay. Go. I think we gotta go like so bad. Like we heard sirens already, so like we are. They are approaching. Out of time. Yeah. All right. You go running out the back. Uh, is everybody done? Oh, yeah. All right. You go running out the hole in the wall. Um. Everybody, make a coordination roll and tell me what out, you got. Run out a way that there we people aren't looking at. Like, can we? Yeah. Go you want to run to the back? Hey, you got, you've got two options or three <laughs> options, as far as I can yeah. remember. Uh, you can go out this hole in the wall that mm -hmm. uh, just made. You can go out yeah, the no. front where those six guys were uh, last time you checked. Uh, or you can go back where you originally tied up where there was a window. Could we Could we find a somewhere where we know an alleyway is in face of the wall? Right. Uh, those are your three options. I mean, we can make <laughs> a new hole in the wall. It's true. I just oh, people are looking at this hole, hole right in the wall. Uh, sure. You Every can. wall with a door. <laughs> It yeah, just... you go, let's see, uh, how would this building be set up? Sure. Let's say there, there is an alley next to the building, and if you want, you can make a quick exit by blasting your way into the alley and trying to, you know, scoot down to the sidewalk and, I don't know, I guess casually. We, we don't have to phase out, right? You, oh, yeah, you could. That's yeah. what I was asking. Like, all right. we could find that. So we could all yeah, just if everyone wants to put, like, a hand on my shoulder, I think we can all phase out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let you have that. Yeah, you don't have to roll for that. You all face through and you find yourselves in an alley and you walk down uh, the alley and out onto the sidewalk uh, where you sort of turn away from the store and casually walk away and everybody make a coordination roll and tell me what you get. Boy, okay. Uh, I already rolled for honor's sake, so I'll take the seven. You got a seven? Yeah. Oof. Benny? Four. Uh, I got five, eight, and eight. So eight to four and five. Um, <laughs> so you are slipping down the sidewalk, getting away. Uh -huh. uh, when a, you know, you just many police cruisers start shooting down the street towards uh, where you are running away from, and most of them just go right by you. Uh, but one of them, as it goes by, really quick, out of the corner of your eye. Uh, uh, Benny and Liz, you you kind of catch uh, the face of Detective Leon Neal uh, as, as as he sort of like quizzically looks out the window as, as his car goes by and just clocks you walking down the sidewalk. But otherwise, you all get away and you make it back and uh, you know make it to the end of the block, turn a corner, and kind of disappear into the foot traffic. I will uh, inform the party of who, who passed us. Okay. That's probably something we're going to have to deal with. But also, if this thing is escalating, maybe we want to reach out to Detective Neil and alert them of the stuff that's going on. We can we can make that call later. That yeah. was sort of just a back. I've had a pretty good, just so you all know, I've had a pretty good rapport with him. He is a fan of my the work I did in my previous life. So, well, so, oh, before we can arrive, Vion, if I may, you look like you are about to wilt. I feel like I'm about to wilt. <laughs> may I? Oh, please. That, yes, please, please. And I would like to use my healing blast. Uh, yeah, your healing blast is level two and... Uh, Make sure I'm doing this right. Uh, 
make sure we haven't figured out that. Oh, Vion, you were supposed to roll uh, an uh oh die when you do your visions, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let yeah, me roll that really quickly to see. I yeah, know we're at the end of our chapter, but. Yeah, we're at the end of the chapter anyway, but we got to remember that in the future. Okay, uh, well, just so you know, Rick, I uh, that was a burnout. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, you are burnt out, uh, burnt out on visions for a little bit right now, but um, let's see. Healing. Uh, let's touch subject. Hey, up to twice your power level in stamina. So I'm going to say because you are not under combat circumstances right now, uh, beyond it is fully effective on you and you are back to seven your full stamina level because that is it looks really pretty. Thank you very much, Ulysses. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. You look much better, much more healthier now. Thank you. I feel a lot better. And speaking of which, Ulez, you too, your, you know, your hair, your, 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 you know, dreads are glowing, you know, much brighter than they were this morning while your system was rebooting and working on itself. You also kind of feel and look a little bit healthier. Aww. I love so it. Where are the four of you headed now? Hospital or to analyze bomb schematics. Uh, I think both can conceivably happen. One can analyze bomb schematics anywhere. I'll only be able to perform surgery on incoming patients from Baronsdale at the hospital. I think, though, if I'm being completely honest, if we're going to be getting around and taking care of business, I think the subway is not going to cut it for us. And I'd like to look around for something we could like use or hot wire or I well, I want to pick up some keys. It's it, it's funny, yeah. Oh yeah, you're right, Ulez. I did yeah, yeah, I do have some jangling keys on my on my belt. Well, this 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 gift is on, on the chat for you. Um as, <laughs> as you as you round the corner, um we will say uh that you uh you pass parked on the corner there a nineteen eighty nine barred traveler minivan. Uh, that uh, has a little note uh, pinned uh, to the window. Uh, it says, um, keys in the ignition, use it well. And uh, it, uh, it, 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 it uh, on the bottom, uh, on the top, it says, um, to uh, Vion Plus. Well, Ask and thou shalt receive. Am I right? <laughs> uh, and I like to grab the keys. And smooth this moment, but you've got the van now. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to. Uh, I look to Ulez, and then I look to the doc, and I kind of consider it. And I turn to Benny, and I nod. You want to drive, Benny? Yeah, I can drive. I would like to chuck the keys to Benny. Benny, you catch those keys uh, and you jump behind the wheel of the car. And... This is probably smaller than the vehicle she's used to driving on the farm, <laughs> despite the fact that it is a van. <laughs> Rick, yeah. you said this is a 1989 vehicle? 89, yeah. Um, so that means there's a tape player. <laughs> yeah. There's a tape player, yeah. Okay. Are, are there any tapes in the van? Roll. Um, no, I won't make you roll. I'll just say. Uh, <laughs> they all morph into queen after a certain number of months. I remember this. Just <laughs> yes, you find uh, Culture Club's greatest hits. <laughs> now, this is perfect. And I'd like to I would like to pop it in. Uh, from the back, I would like to make a point. I didn't. I didn't jump in the passenger seat. I jumped into like the, one of the back seats. Um, and you pop it in, and nothing happens. The tic deck doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I can fix this. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, we'll get Liz on it. <laughs> uh, and I will say, Benny, you turn the key and crank the engine, and it roars to life uh for a minivan <laughs> all you, i can think of was the yeah. sound that the truck made when i met the first vehicle i drove which is like a 91 ford pickup truck with an xl bed it sounds like a bus <laughs> and like had like the ring, ring, ring. like that's <laughs> how that starts <laughs> and uh yeah the engine comes to life 
and you, you know, kind of settle in and look around and, you know, get your bearings and yeah, you look around at everybody else and you put your foot on the gas, like all the way down and the car just screeches <laughs> out of its spot and into traffic. She says driving in the city sucks and then we run the block. <laughs> and, 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 and as you say, driving in the city sucks, we'll see you next week for <laughs> the season finale. <laughs> Oh, okay. it's too uh, soon. Yeah. Oh my God. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for unlocking uh, everything again. Um, I, I cannot. I, we are super grateful. You have been amazing with us all season, and I, I cannot believe this is it. One more to go. Um, it, you know, it is, it is my greatest honor and privilege to play with y'all and to get to hang with everybody in the chat and, and, and. Uh, uh, I'm gonna miss it on a break. Oh my god, I'm already kind of sad. Um, uh, so yeah, let's see. Okay, we got a couple of minutes. First, uh, we have the second. Uh, do we have a second winner? Uh, do Jake will, I guess, let me know about the second winner when we got the second winner for the BPRD. Um, and otherwise, let's see. Closing announcements. Closing announcements. Sorry. Where did I put my? Uh... Oh, there it is. Uh, <laughs> you just read like an NPC stat sheet out to us. I, yeah, <laughs> that's all I can find. I'm like uh, Mickey Bomberg. Uh, <laughs> read me an NPC stat sheet, and I'd be entertained. <laughs> yeah. This man right here. Uh, oh no! You stop. No, don't be nice to me. I'm not used to that. Honestly, it's like I'm, if you want to punk me with a stick, like that is much more like what I am. After we <laughs> game, after game, I'm nice. Uh, so uh, first, uh, I would like to say the winner of the BPRD Plague of Frogs uh, trade paperback is brrr, boom, PFW Scott. <gasps> Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, our old friend, PFW Scott. Congratulations, PFW Scott. If you are still here in the chat, uh, you will be getting that straight from Dark Horse. Get your information to Jake. And uh, thank you to Kara O'Neill and our friends at Dark Horse for providing these prizes. I am super happy to be able to give this stuff away to y'all. Actually, I love all this stuff. And, and, you know, I don't know. If we can mint even one new comic fan, it's worth it. Uh, so... Yeah, congratulations, PFW Scott, and congratulations to uh, um, uh, uh, Mr. Owlbear, who was our first winner. And on that, let's see. So, tomorrow is your last day to register to vote in Georgia. Please, for the love of all that is good and holy in this universe, if you can register uh, in Georgia and you can vote, please do it. It is so important to take control of the Senate. And uh, so before the election, you can register now. So yeah, if you're not if you're 17 now, but turn 18 before the election, you can still register. Yeah, you are 17 going on voting. I'm not Sam, so I'm not good at this. <laughs> I love but I that wanted to give there was a side of democracy in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, folks. You know, it's like I'm going to go out on a limb here. You know, obviously, and just say, you know, please. Go register if you can. Go vote if you can. Vote blue. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I've got a favorite here. The stakes are too high to not get political. So please just, you know, do it. And uh, and for us, uh, we got next week is our season finale. Same time, same place. And then uh, just getting this out there as early as I can. We will be back for season two on January 17th. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, January 17th is season two. And that is all the after announcements. So real quick, let's go around the table. Uh, oh, hang around, of course, for our, our after credits lore drop. But first, uh, starting with our friend B Zelda, why don't you let the no good people uh, let the good people know where to find you? Did you just call them no good people? The no good people. Yeah, no. My, <laughs> my mouth Tell no more is, good no more. These ruffians. These <laughs> right? poor I poor. Love you. You're 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 the best no good people that there are. <laughs> We want around. Oh, <laughs> uh, heck. Well, hello. I have been B Zelda. You can find me on Twitter is at B underscore Zelda. Add an extra underscore if you want to follow me on Instagram. I think after this, like next Sunday, I'm taking a break for like two weeks from streaming. It doesn't sound real. It doesn't. What have you done with B? Something's going to come up. Let's be real. 
I have at least five offline games planned because I don't want free time. Um, so if we're acquaintances and you've always wanted to play Alice is Missing or Thirsty Sword Lesbians, hit me up on Twitter. I'm running nonstop games because crippling loneliness just can't stop me right now. Omar and John. Hey, I'm Omar Najam. You can find me on Twitter at Omar Najam. I don't have anything to plug because it's the holidays. I will say in the spirit of Vion, uh, everything's tough. So do something kind for yourself tonight or this week because that would be that'd be great. And follow Omar on Twitter. He's hilarious. Thank uh, you. And Caitlin Bruder. Hi, I've been Caitlin Bruder. Um, you can find me on Twitter at K-K-A-M-A-B-R um, and you can check me out doing uh, another playing another superpowered character over on twitch.tv slash rule of lore on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific in our uh, sci fi super powered space faring cipher system game. It's extremely fun, and that's the only other thing I'm on. So check it out. <laughs> and of course, Sam DeLib. Hello, I am allegedly Sam DeLev. When I am not destroying evildoers, you can find me on Twitter at Tchaikovsky, C-H-A-I-K-O-B-S-K-Y. My full role-playing and variety streaming schedule where, yeah, I, I, I smite people and they make the surprise eyebrows like they didn't they destroy you right on the tin. I do it all week. You can get that full schedule on twitch.tv slash DeLevely, D-E-L-E-V-E-L-Y. Yeah, they are not kidding. Uh, there's pretty much no night of the week that they are not smiting evildoers. Uh, and uh, slightly more relaxed, but I just checked, <laughs> and it is currently up to date with all like whatever four to six events are on there. So check it out. And I'm Rick Bud. You can find me on Twitter at rbud913 and uh, Instagram, and you can find uh, the show at Power Play RPG uh, on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, like I said, you can always shoot me questions about the rules or our continuity. I'm, I'm happy to chat with people. Um, and uh, that, yeah, and that's it. Next week is the season finale. I just, and no matter how many times I say it, it sort of feels like we just started five minutes ago. Uh, and you know, uh, yeah, it's very weird. Tells a satisfying arc, but you always instantly want more the moment you finish it. Oh God! I, I hope y'all want more the moment we finish it. Oh my God! It's like you know, it's a pressure. God! Ah no! Oh no! Okay. All right. So before I, I descend into um, my 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 week long uh, bout with imposter syndrome, uh, <laughs> let's do uh, the after credit lore drop. So the theater goes dark, and we are in Death Valley, California. It's early, maybe just after dawn. A van pulls over to the side of a dirt road and four guys who look like college students hop out. Uh, three of them are dressed as cowboys and uh, the other one is uh, dressed casually and he starts unloading film equipment, uh, cameras and lights and that kind of stuff. And one of the cowboys looks around and says, uh, I don't see anything. And the one with the camera goes, just trust me. And the cowboy goes, all right, all right, you're the director. And uh, they lock up the van and head up a narrow path that leads them into the dunes until they come to the edge of a ravine. And the director points down into it and he goes, voila. And the others look down and they see the long abandoned ruins of what was once a small Western town. Two rows of lonely ramshackle buildings frame what was once a wide main street and, and the remains of a few smaller structures uh, are still visible on the periphery. And the director says, we shoot some inserts down there and this thing is gonna look like a million bucks. We all get A's for sure. And the four of them make their way down, uh, they climb down to the town and the director kind of points and he says, okay, we'll just start with you guys right over there and uh, walk along the buildings until you reach the end of the row. And one of the cowboys points at the ground and he says, should we do something about these tire tracks? And uh, the others look down and, you know, indeed there, there are a set of tire tracks there in, in the un otherwise undisturbed dirt. And the director says, uh, how the hell did someone get a car down here? And the four, sort of slowly just start to follow the tracks, which lead them slightly down the street and then between two of those buildings. And as they turn the corner, they stop. And right in front of them, half buried in the sand, 
there is this sports car with the front end of it absolutely just smashed and demolished. And the director cautiously approaches the car. And he kind of peeks in the window. And then he like shouts and he jumps back like in terror. And the others come running forward and they all look in. And there, laying on the back seat, is the dead, decaying body of a man. And one of the stunned actors says, we should be filming this. And as the director picks the camera up onto his shoulder and starts to record, we'll see you next week for the season finale of Power Play.